welcome, welcome to the first Blizzard Comedy Broadcast ever launch of two of twenty twenty one. I know you said two thousand eleven. Wrong year. Uh, <laughs> twenty twenty one. And I don't know about you, but I for one, I'm, I'm fucking thrilled that the the twenty twenty is finally over. Because what a year twenty twenty one is shaping up to be already. Uh, Donald Trump is no longer the president of the United States of, of America. Great Brexit was cancelled last minute. The NHS is being properly funded. Every single Tory politician has resigned in shame to be replaced by a socialist <laughs> government led by someone called Jeremy Jorbin, uh, who is like Jeremy <laughs> Jorbin, but uh, he's wearing a different pair of glasses and has a bigger moustache. Uh, the virus decided to quit while it's ahead and take an early retirement. And all cis white men have been banned from Twitter. And and best of all, we're all allowed to fuck again. So 2021 is going to be a fantastic year. Joe Biden has been inaugurated now, and his first actions as president include rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement, improving protections for LGBTQIA groups, and definitely closing Guantanamo Bay this time for definite right. I promise there's going to be no more Guantanamo Bay, no more war crimes and human rights violations for the purpose of military benefits. Oh, hey, look over there. Bernie's wearing mittens. <laughs> what was that about Guantanamo Bay? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, protests at the mur murder of George, George Floyd took place all across the US and worldwide. There were scenes of looting, vandalism, and extreme violence, but enough about the police. Uh, some protests <laughs> were awfully loud at times. The BBC has committed £100 million to increasing diversity on TV. With that money, they'll now be able to platform both racists and transphobes. Boris Johnson has claimed that absolute and relative poverty has fallen under his government. Uh, we don't actually have the figures for this year yet, so we can't verify that. But to be fair, it's quite easy to eliminate poverty when those who are in poverty are unable to, to sustain their own lives due to your policies. Uh, COVID-19 COVID is disproportionately killing the disadvantaged, which leads me to believe that Boris thinks that eliminating poverty is just a synonym for killing the poor. Uh, and uh, uh, where are the jokes, Johnny? Where are the jokes? <laughs> uh, historian David Starkey was dropped by his publisher after controversial claims that slavery was not genocide because there's still a lot of black people alive. Many people considered this to be racist, but Starkey was quick to apologize and said categorically that he is not racist as some of his favorite slaves were black. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I, probably should, I probably should have put that one a bit later. That's quite funny. <laughs> um, uh, the government also plans to scrap the Gender Recognition Act reform on account of worrying that if people are allowed to self-ID their own gender, then CEOs are going to be confused on who they should be paying less. Uh, <laughs> uh, President Biden has officially cancelled work on Donald Trump's border wall. Fucking hell, now not even walls are safe from cancel culture. And people say <laughs> getting never hurt anyone. Uh, Ross Limbaugh is dead. Yay! 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 So I don't care if that's wrong. Uh, some people, is, so some people do say that it is wrong to celebrate the death of another human being, even if you didn't get on. And to those people, I just want to say, like, I hear the point you're making. I get where you're coming from. But have you considered? Uh, shut the fuck up. I hope you die. Uh, <laughs> welcome. We're inclusive <laughs> to everyone here at Blizzard. Um, <laughs> Oh, Johnny, so you much. look so sweet and cute, and then you sound so aggressive. <laughs> so much for the tolerant I... left. <laughs> Acclaimed transphobe J.K. Rowling doubles down on being a <laughs> piece of shit by threatening legal action against the children's news website The Day for implying that her transphobic comments, which were transphobic against trans people, were in fact transphobic. Mere weeks after signing an open letter, in fact, in favour of free speech and open debate, which, as we all know, is achieved by threatening legal action on poorer independent publications than you, writing about how your transphobic views and transphobic words are actually transphobic. Thank God for Russell open and fair debate. Where would we be without people like Rowling battling cancel culture by silencing independent journalism? What a transphobic cunt. Uh, uh, London buses have been repurposed as ambulances to aid the NHS in, the, in their time of struggle, indicating that London is now so expensive to live in that even inanimate objects need to work two jobs to survive. Uh, there have been over 100 new coronavirus cases confirmed, uh, confirmed follow, following Smash Mouth's last maskless and non-social distance gig. They just keep on coming and they won't stop coming. Uh, <laughs> that's my favourite one and I hate it. Uh, <laughs> At the end of the Brexit transition period, Britain has finally got their sovereignty back and we uh, have the opportunity to thrive as, a, as an independent na nation. In completely unrelated news, the government advises big businesses to move jobs to Europe to avoid Brexit damages. Bloody Europeans staying over there, stealing our jobs. <laughs> oh, <fuck laughs> uh, <laughs> and finally, uh, Don's troop diversity have come under fire with nearly 25,000 complaints 
following their powerful interpretive performance of, uh, of police brutality and the death of George Floyd on Britain's Got Talent. Communications regulator Ofcom made a statement saying that they will not be investigating the complaints, saying, oh, did some little snowflakes get upset at some people doing a little dance on TV they didn't <laughs> like? Oh, did them. Hey, I'll let you on a little secret. You know who I can't stand? Tess Daly and Claudia Winkleman. But you never see me complaining about fucking Strictly. Why? Because I'm a fucking adult and realize that TV is not centered around my own personal views and preferences. Grow up and stop being mad that Black Lives Matter just because yours clearly doesn't. Uh, <laughs> for the sake of transparency, I did paraphrase that a little bit <laughs> for the sake of content. Uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't want anyone to leave the stream under the impression that uh, the, the fine people at uh, Ofcom regulators handle this with anything other than the utmost professionalism required of an impartial regulator. So just so you know, for the record, what they actually said was, uh, all cops are bastards, kill all white people. <laughs> which, was, <laughs> which is much more respectful than anything I could say in a million years. Uh, and on the note of killing all white people, let's introduce the white people today. <laughs> as, <laughs> as ever, I am joined by the ever delightful Kirsty Summers and the sometimes all right Tom B. All right. <laughs> I love and, you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. And as an added bonus, joining Kirsty's team tonight, we have the funniest trans person who isn't me, I know, and a Blizzard comedy favorite, Umbi Winters and Khaled Winter. Sam just realized Sam's I put Winter on Kirsty's team. I just, wait, well. <laughs> Sam's not on Kirsty's team. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, Tom, I you genuinely thought. I genuinely thought I'd fucked up then. Fuck off, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I entirely just realised I just put Winters and Winter on the same team. No, like, yeah, it's like I, I'm I'm better than Khaled just because there's more of me. Like, I'm the yeah. plural of Khaled <laughs> because I'm a they them. Truly spoken like someone with a child. <laughs> it's true. And on Tom's team tonight, we are joined by the asexual punster Elliot Simpson and improv queen Kate McCabe. Yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah, my team, my team, <laughs> team uh, but, better uh, than Kirsty's yeah. team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for coming on the show, and thank you for coming back, Kirsty and Tom. How 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 are you doing this fine New Year? Uh, you know, I've had two wisdom teeth removed already, so it's not been the best start. But <laughs> that's what you get. You don't go to the dentist for seven years, so we'll tally it up to even. Um, but I've uh, been all right. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a key worker now. It's very different to the first lockdown. I'm tired all the time. But so it's <laughs> the same as the first lockdown. It just went and roundabout. I'm all right. That was the question, wasn't it? Sorry. Yes. Good. Thank you for asking, Tom. Um, I went to the dentist in lockdown as well, Tom. Did you find it very strange not being touched by anyone for eight months and then having people put their fingers in your mouth? <laughs> I found it really weird. Really weird really weird i focused very hard on the pictures of balloons they have above the chair it was uh, <laughs> it was a fun time no i'm doing well we um, have william stone how are you doing i'm all right thanks yeah um i just had a uh, couple of extra wisdom teeth put in <laughs> <laughs> fantastic yeah um not not really been doing much um i've been I, I used to be do a lot of sport and stuff before lockdown, and I, I've really been missing that. So, um, but I'm obviously really aware of like the safety concerns and stuff. So I've I've started jousting. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've also got Red Redmond tonight. Red, how are you doing? Hi, hello. Uh, terrible, awful, but I'm ready for anything. Oh, oh no! <laughs> what's what's what what what's been what's been going on? Is it anything specific or just? Oh, the, the, have you not heard, I, I, Johnny? I, I, there's there's been a pandemic. Yeah. Oh, it's Wait, been shit for, <laughs> for at least a year. It's been awful. It's been really <laughs> bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, how did I miss it? I, I wondered why we were doing these live stream shows. <laughs> I'm really glad to have you on the show. I think you were actually one of the first people we had applying to our first night uh, back in April of 2019, and I couldn't fit you on then, and I just like kept delaying it, and then the world ended. So I'm really sorry that we never managed to get you on our actual live shows. You, uh, but... you just you created a pandemic just as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I get it. I get it. David, David, um, you are. I've just realised you are the only cis white man on this this lineup. How does it feel to be a minority? <laughs> I'm happy to be rep. rep 
representing? <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are, you are, you are representing the the, the the typical cis male today, David. So uh, anything you say and do will will be uh, reflected upon your entire community. So just be aware of that. <laughs> Johnny, can you just can I just say David is the real victim in 2020? Could you just David acknowledge is... that, please? <laughs> David's life matters uh, specifically, David. <laughs> I'm, I'm also a cis white man and enjoy video games. In fairness, and I'm 30. We're just really we're repping we're repping Team Beige over here. <laughs> yeah, Tom. I totally forgot that you were cis when I was introducing you. I, 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 I really, I really like the. Uh, you don't see me. I couldn't tell. I really like the. I really like the bisexual, bisexual gets me a get out of cis free card. That's yeah. <laughs> also on the subject of diversity. I just want to celebrate. I think this is the first stream we've had where Kirsty is the closest thing we've had to a straight person on on the stream. So <laughs> this is. How like, do you feel yeah. about that, Kirsty? Close to being straight, How, the proximity to straightness. <laughs> You're perpendicular no. to it. Please, please don't let it define you, Kirsty. <laughs> um, I, f I feel like the impact of my like token cis hetness is diminished by my gay Christmas tree. Mm. Um, but I don't mind. <laughs> no, but no, the gay Christmas tree is the almost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always leave them wondering. <laughs> Leave some questions unanswered, Kirsty. Be enigmatic. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, between the Christmas tree and like my hair, lesbian haircut number three. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I look like a teenage boy from the nineties, yeah. you're fooling a lot of women. Breaking hearts, Kirsty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm excited Wait, for this show. He's drinking a beer. <laughs> this is a cider, actually. But oh, all right. Uh, it's a gift from my aunt. Like, if it had been up to me, it would have been a bit. Yeah, but, yeah, when we did, yeah, when we did the election stream, you had like an entire quarter of craft beers that were for charity. Oh, I did. So. oh I'm such an old man, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kat Molinari, I'm so excited to have you on the show. We've wanted to have you for a while. How 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 are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Um, just coping at the moment, like everybody else. Really. Yeah, yeah, sounds standard. Uh, I'm really excited to have you on the show because you 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 now get to experience what the pain it is to work with Tom B in a professional sense as well as <laughs> as well as in a, in in a relationship sense. So uh, I'm really looking forward to to the the possible ending of your relationship after this, which we take no responsibility for. I um, have hard work. <laughs> well, we we're just going to stop at hard. Then I was like, no. not. I was like, fuck's sake, right? Five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Been through this. Not on my meds, cat. Not on my meds. <laughs> uh, Ed, how are you doing? I'm all right. I've been doing lots of reading. That's good. What have you been reading? Uh, like, well, I've been getting through a, a book every few days. You know, you can't spell book without ooh. <laughs> and you can't spell good book without ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and you know what, Johnny? I think you're good. And you can't spell you're good without ow. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am I am putting that on all of my future posters. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Uh, have you been up to anything uh, project-wise, or uh, is this your first kind of outing into uh, creativity <laughs> over this time? Your first outing into creativity. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's how I phrased it. I stand by it. I definitely don't. Uh... <laughs> creativity is a strong word. I just... I just... <laughs> I did just spell words to you. <laughs> you did it in a creative way. <laughs> Khaled, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Fantastic. Um, so I believe uh, that from my sources that you also have a podcast coming up. Is that yeah, true? it should be out in the next couple of weeks. So I'm, um, if you don't know, I'm an archaeologist, or I was before I started doing comedy. So I've <laughs> started a history podcast. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. Uh, what's what's your favorite history? Oh, I don't know if I have a I don't know if I have a favorite history. I mean it's all one thing, isn't it, really, if you think <laughs> about it. <laughs> it is true. Wise words, all, all, all history is linked. Uh what it, so what, what, what what's the theme of your first episode? It, it, it quite so the first one, the first release, I guess, is a four part series on the Black Death, which Fantastic. I thought would be quite interesting. It'd be quite interesting to compare it to the pandemic that we're living in now. Um, spoiler alert, the Black Death was worse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> although, although, we although, time. We can catch up. Although, another, another spoiler alert, there are many cities in Europe at the time that handled it better than the UK is right now. <laughs> well, 
what, what that's not mean? a joke that's not a joke that's actually a truth just a fact Nuremberg <laughs> <Alpha Nuremberg, laughs> and Milan both handled it better than the UK are handling coronavirus of course Ooh. they fucking did that's... can you please lie to me and tell me it was a joke <laughs> Please. It was it was a joke, Kirsty. It was it was it was all a joke. This is this is the only show I've been on where I can also watch the football league playoffs while we're talking. So that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I, am, I am very grateful that, 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 that you are giving us uh, your full attention, Andrew. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, how how are the playoffs going? I mean, uh, no, it's nil nil after four minutes between uh, Cardiff and Fulham. <laughs> <laughs> nil nil after four minutes uh, yeah. terrible <laughs> I'm giving you my 98% of my attention Johnny so fantastic I am fantastic I'm in spirit I well, just can't wait for halfway through a round where Andrew just sort of just jets in anyway <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what, so- I don't even care who wins why the hell am I watching it <laughs> my, just my really doesn't want to pay attention to this yeah that's valid <laughs> well I'm turning it off it's <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, uh, so we're getting ninety-eight percent of your attention, Andrew. That's fine. Uh, our, our, our motto is, of course, "fuck the two percent." So, uh, <laughs> uh, um, we are, uh, and last but not least, we have the wonderful Ian Lane. How are you doing today, Ian? Yeah, I'm all right. It's uh, Autism Awareness Week, so between you and me, we're smashing two public holidays on this particular uh, <laughs> stream. It is amazing. That's that's that 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 is what 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 Blizzard Company is is all about. Cashing in on 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 uh, convenient box just, ticking for the win. Yeah. I'm well up for it. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, Ian, uh, what, what tell us what you've been up to uh, over lockdown? You've been doing a lot of streaming on Twitch. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I speed run old video games, and when I say old, I mean like before Christ. Um, <laughs> uh, it, like I, I, I spent about a year speed running Jet Set Willy. I now know that game inside out. I hate it. Um, <laughs> please, please don't come into my uh, stream asking me to play that. I've moved on now. I do modern games like Worms Armageddon. So, <laughs> um, what yeah. year was that one released? Uh, 1999, which was the last recorded year. So <laughs> I wasn't even born. <laughs> I mean, it's on Steam, so you know it's been. It's been. They did that specially for you. Are just we just going to pretend yeah. like that was nothing? What? <laughs> what, what? What was nothing? Are you old enough to be on this stream? <laughs> <laughs> Are you old enough to be on Twitch? <laughs> I was. I, I was born after the. I was born twenty days after the millennium. Aww. So I. That's amazing. Know. My favorite, uh, my favorite thing to say to people like is, "Do you remember the millennium?" And then people go, "Yeah, like the millennium was such a good time." And I'll just go, "Oh, great, I don't." <laughs> so, so your the parents the- really partied like it was nineteen ninety nine, huh? <laughs> they, really did. they really did. They did that, like, like, um, like nine case. months early into 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 nineteen ninety nine, preparing for the new year all this, that time. For the- the people who are like, oh, it makes me feel old. It's making I'm normally the youngest one on the on things because I'm 97. So now I'm feeling old. Yeah. I forgot you meant 1997 is the year. I yeah. thought you were just being fucking like uh, whimsical by saying you were 97 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Tom V. I'm 97. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Like Cher, you just like never age. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the token boomer of this dream. If that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, I'm 35, but my hair's approaching 50, so... <laughs> Our first round is going to be Jeez. Fake News Detectives. Uh, this is the game where we give each team three headlines. Two of them are real printed or published headlines. Nothing's printed anymore. It's all, it's all online, isn't it? Uh, can't keep up with this fangled new technology. I'm going to give you three headlines. Two of them are published, and one of them is one which I have just made up, and the teams have to identify which one is the false headline. So we're going to start with Kirsty's team first. Kirsty, your three headlines are as follows. Uh, Politician named Adolf Hitler wins election in Nambia. Yeah. Uh, farmer given three day Facebook ban over literal cows. And uh, an anti LGBTQ scoreboard member poops on camera during a live Zoom meeting, then resigns. Uh, I'll copy and paste these into the Zoom chat <laughs> so you can see them for reference. All right. <laughs> right. Uh, Kat Ella, does, does, does anyone have uh, any initial thoughts? Because I know for a fact that one is true. 
I Same. Know, I know like, for a fact that the first one yeah, actually like, happened. Like a friend of mine texted me that and we had like a long <laughs> conversation. And like I've, I've read a whole story about this poor man who was like, we have this huge German like culture based on when the Germans were here slightly before the war and we weren't really involved in it and that some of the things that have been retained aren't great and this is how I got this name and now I've signed all of the documents and it'd be too much hassle to change it was basically his excuse and it's not his fault it's clearly his parents (laughs) fault um (laughs) I just I felt I kind I kind of felt bad for the guy who like never had to deal with the fact that like Adolf (laughs) Hitler had any connotations to it until he got internationally famous. <laughs> <laughs> the, the way I found out about that one is because somebody I follow on Twitter about six months ago made a couple of predictions for 2020. And one of them was <laughs> oh, Adolf God. Hitler comes back. And, <laughs> and then the article was published. And he was like, oh, sorry, she was like, I didn't think that one was going to make the cut, but here we are. <laughs> Why not 2020? <laughs> I, think, I think my favourite bit about it was I was reading it and he's like, yeah, you know, I got into a politics to be an anti-apartheid campaigner. And it's like, oh, of all the no. fucking people to be called Adolf Hitler, <laughs> <laughs> anti-apartheid campaigner. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that that one I definitely know is a thing. Like, someone yeah. went out of their way to send me that one. Um, so I the- think... I think I know the others, but I'm less confident. So feel free if anyone knows more than me to let me know. So the way I see it, the first one is definitely true, unless Johnny did a mean, and it's actually not Nambia. Um, <laughs> that is very. Well, that's, that's a reasonable assumption. I wouldn't put it past Johnny. <laughs> And the, that's how they get me. And I want to say it's the second one because I need the third one to be true. <laughs> I want the third one to be true. I like the idea of a turd and turn. Exactly. I I was thinking that um, I would love the third one to be true, but I I feel like I definitely heard the second one. But the second one because it's about cows. eh? (laughs) Someone had to get it. I I feel like I did hear about that one, but also it could be I heard something similar, and Johnny's trying to fuck with me like they do every month. Um. (laughs) But I, I possibly, I think the third one is quite possibly a, I, I don't know, because that one, like, I've definitely seen stories about, like, someone accidentally, like, not turning their sound off or they snuck off for a shit while taking their laptop with them and in a Zoom meeting. Yeah, but that could have been me on any social distance. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I think... Is, is, does anyone have anything they're particularly leading towards as being the true one? I would like the last one to be true, but if I'm honest, I think that is the one that's false and something similar is true. I'm with you, Kirsty, but I'm, I like the idea of like, but then it, it seems more believable if it was accidental, but I like the idea of them doing a poo on camera out of protest and then quitting. <laughs> the <job. laughs> Wait, I mean, I'd yeah, even though they're anti-LGBT, but I don't know. Here's what I think. Yeah. So the, 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 I, I think the, the trans-exclusionary radical dickhead, um, <laughs> the turd, uh, is, I think that one is close, but I think it's not quite that. And I think it's going to be, that's the one that's fake. And we want to pick the one that's boring, which is the second one. <laughs> yeah, I think the third, it's ironic that the third one about poo would be hard to pass. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are you going for the, the third one as the, the fake one? I think yes. <laughs> that, that's a solid yes. Uh, yep, uh, uh, I'm afraid you are wrong. It is actually the second one which is oh, fake. Fuck. <laughs> yep, so, Did a fart uh, uh, over sheep? Because I feel like something yes, similar definitely. That, yep, yep, that, that's the one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A farmer, was not, a, a farmer was not given a three-day Facebook ban over cows. It was in fact over over sheep, the much the much saucier barnyard animal. Uh, and, um, <laughs> as, as, as 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 for the bottom one, uh, an anti-LGBTQ school uh, school board member. Uh, 
did, in fact, take her laptop to the toilet while on a Zoom meeting as she did a poo. With her, also, the, the thing that gets me is she did this on a, a Zoom meeting with 150 participants. That's, that's bigger than my biggest stand-up audience. This woman has pooed in front of more people than I've performed to perform comedy to. That's I great. thought... I thought all the shit came out their mouths, though. I'm a bit confused. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe that's why she needed to go to the loo. It's bi-directional. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I and... hate that as soon as you told me that number two was the lie, I remembered the actual fucking story. <laughs> I, I yep, you did. Fuck it, that number two was the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yep. so no oh. points through that round uh, and also yes uh, you're right uh, a Nambian politician named Adolf Hitler has won a sweeping victory in a local election uh, but, but but he said that he has no plans for world domination so glad we've cleared Excellent. that up the last <laughs> one did to be fair so did the last one yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> Tom your three headlines are salon banned from using the word happy in job ad <laughs> uh, good <laughs> 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 Do I need to read the others or are you going to go with that one just because you wanted to? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, man sells 20 year old Lego Bionicle collection to buy a house. And... <laughs> Johnny, you can't write stories about yourself. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a man. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair, fair. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, Bristol Silent Disco banned for being too noisy. Good. Uh... <laughs> It's uh, yeah no I know about bionicles and I I don't think they that's the the nerdiest thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> I know about bionicles. And you have a podcast I, about Star Trek. I have a podcast about Star Trek and I'm sat in front of a cardboard cut out of Spider Man. And <laughs> um, I. I don't think you would make enough to buy a house by selling old bionicles because I don't think like because if you tried any. It, well, it I suppose, but like any little ones with like defects on. I've been researching. I've got some Harry Potter first editions, which I'm obviously getting rid of, and some of them are worth a few hundred quid, which is going straight into like a trans person's FFS fund or top surgery or whatever. Mm. Um, but like, <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> um, yeah, one order of the Phoenix is worth a hundred, and then two others are worth not um, fifty. So. <laughs> I'm going yeah, to but... pay and do this gig. And that a, ho- a whole pound for a bigoted view. Yeah. <laughs> well, how much is a house going to cost you? How many bionicles do you reckon a house will cost? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you listen to my parents, about 50 quid and a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, rec- I reckon it's more expensive to buy a house or buy bionicles and then make a house out of bionicles. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> James May made that Lego house that one time. Like, I mean, no, but yes. Oh, the Bionicle house would have too many holes in it. <laughs> oh, no, that's Matano. I'm thinking of Matano. Uh, <laughs> no, it would just have lots of moving parts. Yeah, Bionicle house would have like little <gasps> things that like jump house. out. I can have yeah. a posable house. Just a like, oh, house. <laughs> oh, the Jehovah's Witnesses are on the way. Quit. Put it in the fighting position. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I thought, I thought you said an opposable house. Uh, and I was like, that's just the House of Lords. <laughs> anyway, we've got off, we've we've got off topic. Um, Sorry, yeah. yeah. What was the <laughs> other one? Um, salon, salon ban. Ba- yeah, salon ban the word use uh, salon ban from using the word happy in job ad. Okay. I reckon I reckon that's true. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, the miserable fucking places, aren't they? So it is like false advertising. What kind of salon do you think it is? I think it's a hair salon, but with like all the visors and stuff. So it's really quite depressing. Yeah, I was thinking like. Oh no, that's a saloon. <laughs> I was like, you can't ban the word "happy" from. A, I'd be happy to be in a saloon. I'd be, I'd, I'd, I'd fucking There's love no a way to go through those what doors about? and not be happy. Exactly, those doors are the doors of happiness. Those saloon doors. You know when um, you know when you walk into the saloon and the um, the piano, like the pianist stops playing piano and everyone just turns around it's just because they're really happy and they don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> they're like yeah we've got another guy for our party right uh i'm ready to hurry you a little bit because we've been oh. on this for far longer than we should have been bionicle <laughs> i'm gonna say bionicle space Wait, really yeah, like bionicle uh, they, these people do not represent the views of the entire team. Bionicle community. It's not. It must be. Who would have wanted was convincing us it was fake? <laughs> uh, hang on, are we supposed argument? to? Are we? Yeah, hang on, are we the choosing fake the fake one, right? one or the real one? You are guessing the fake one. Yes. Oh yes, right. Okay. Bionicle. Sure. Yeah. Bionicle. Go for it. Right. Bionicle. <laughs> you are correct. You are correct. It is the bionicle one. Yes. That is, that is the fake one. Ah, uh, take that, Kirsty. 
I see. Teams... Shut up. We all know all the points are in the last round anyway. This doesn't which mean I'm, shit. Which I'm very good at. <laughs> very good at. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Jake was entirely right. Unfortunately, a complete bionicle connection is unlikely to net you enough to put a deposit down on a house. However, if you do have a house, if you sell that, you can complete a bionicle collection really easily. <laughs> so just, 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 just a little top tip for any homeowners in our audience, which, judging our primary demographic, is not many. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I try and buy a house, I might just like try and negotiate it down, but throw in a bionicle set just for, you know, to sweeten the deal. <laughs> uh, okay, Tom, Tom, your team is up now. Your three headlines are Hungry MEP quits after allegedly fleeing gay orgy. Uh, streamers flabbergasted after Twitch partially bans the word simp and the world's ugliest daffodil is among new species named in 2020 uh, why that. is it always so much harder than Kirsty's? I thought these were the easier ones to be honest yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think these are the easier ones <laughs> I don't have another screen and I'm so glad that it's hungry the place because I thought that he was just just a really hungry MEP. After yeah. the orgy, was like, <laughs> my, my want a hot dog. <laughs> I thought that they were hungry from all the gay shagging. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I mean, want yeah, a hot yeah. dog. I'll be right back. <laughs> I I know the answer, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I, I honestly have no. I know. I I read it. I've read the entire article, and I can't remember <laughs> what possessed me to even fucking click the button to read it. <laughs> it about 2 o'clock in the morning. I must have been just trolling some website. But yeah, I recognise one of those. <laughs> Unless I'm just hallucinating massively. One, we need to find the bullshit. So we know a true one. Which one's true? I don't know. I'm just really fucking gutted for the daffodil. <laughs> Get uh, Link Paul 200 says, surprisingly, I know this one. <laughs> which streamers is true? Uh, yeah, oh, I think... One. The simp one's true. would be devastating for Kirsty. Simp is the only word she knows. <laughs> That's not true. I know none. <laughs> uh, yep, yep, you are correct. Uh, the world's ugliest daffodil was not among the new species of flower named in 2020. It was actually the world's ugliest orchid. The world's ugliest daffodil uh, has yet to be decided, but I'm sure, I'm sure we will update you when that, when, when, when that exists. Uh, so, yeah, treat Ugly streaming service. Orchids. Oh, if ever there was a My Chemical Romance single, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so streaming service Twitch has banned the word simp uh, and incel and virgin uh, to refer to another person's sexual activity. Uh, it's not allowed under their new policy. Uh, it is interesting to note, they still haven't banned the, the N-word, though. So uh, racial slurs, fine, but simp, that's going too far. Well, um, so how is virgin worse? Because sometimes it is just factually accurate. Yeah, well, I, I don't quite know how it works, because like, it, in the policy it said like, using these words as, as, as a derogatory term towards towards someone else uh, but i don't quite know how they like whether there's an algorithm that works that out or not because if there is it's probably going to be less than perfect if they've I mean, invented an ai that can determine someone's intention to insult that's the most advanced ai that exists yeah. in the world yeah that's i feel like they probably yeah. haven't but um... <laughs> Uh, and yes, an, an uh, MEP from Hungary's ruling political party, uh, which incidentally is incredibly hostile towards LGBT rights, has quit after he was caught attending what Belgian media describe as a gay sex party. Uh, I, I love that. I love the word "described" as a gay sex party. Is it as if like yes, it was a party, and we did have a lot of gay sex. But you know, Keith fought his Cluedo with him, so you could <laughs> might as well call it a Cluedo party. <laughs> well, not necessarily. Uh, the party. main attraction was the cheese board. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it was actually a social distancing party. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, needless to say, this was in breach of the lockdown rules of the area, uh, regardless of the Cluedo to gay sex ratio. Okay, Kirsty's team, your three headlines are. <clears throat> Russia urges the US to observe democratic standards and respect Americans' right to protest. <laughs> uh, Austrian, Austrian police defend decision to fine man after provocative fart. And uh, Texas brewery owner makes new protective masks with hole to drink beer through. I don't know enough about Austrian laws to know if there's some kind of, like... Um anti-social rule that you can break with an aggressive fart maybe they're just but, kink shaming but but equally <laughs> like police will charge you for any old shit 
Maybe like, it was provocative in the sense with uh, the, like the fart sounded like all cops are bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, yeah. I, I would love to be able to it. fart a cab. That'd be amazing. <laughs> someone shouted all cops are bastards and the police went, who said that? And someone was like, no, nah, it was it a was fart. A fart. <laughs> I would love it. I would I would love if that was what this story was. Someone shouted abuse at the cops <laughs> and then when they were called out on it, said it was a fart, so it had to be processed as a fart. <laughs> <laughs> when they went to court that's what i want this story to be i don't necessarily believe that either of the other two are definitely false so i'm happy to go with team consensus on this one let's say let's say it's the fart one so for the fart one you are incorrect the fart one oh. was true uh what? yep yep um <laughs> okay but You'll was it how me. i wanted it to be Aust- Aust- austrian police def- uh, yep yeah, the uh, Defend decision to find man after provocative fart. Uh, there's a quote from the article. Uh, apparently, the report described it as "let go a massive intestinal wind," apparently with full intent. Uh, <laughs> the actual quote. Imagine, imagine being in a place where you get arrested for for letting wind, and yet you kill a black trans woman. No one bats an eyelid. <laughs> I just can I just say that is now how I'm going to describe farts forever. A massive yeah. intestinal wind. <laughs> Sorry, just, just just full and a massive intestinal wind <laughs> or oh, mighty wind is coming <laughs> um yeah the the russia urges the u.s to observe dec- democratic standards one is also true because we live in a weird future uh the texas brewery owner makes new protective master with a whole string beer through is false uh that was not printed anywhere um, that definitely feels like something that's happened, whether it was printed or not. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that maybe that's why it was so convincing, because like it definitely happened, but it's happening so frequently that no newspaper thought it was worth publishing. Yeah, but it's it's yeah. a bit of a trick question that one, isn't it? Because it's in America, and you'd have to wear a mask to have a hole in it. So, <laughs> ah, yeah, good point. Uh, our next round is no context. Next, uh, in this round, you'll be presented with pictures from the news of the month, and we'll be given uh, uh, the opportunity to to guess what what the picture is referring to in the news. So there's going to be no context with the picture, and you have to tell me what is happening in this picture. So can we bring on our first one, please, beautiful assistant? It's already on. <laughs> well, uh, I was not looking at the stream at that point. Uh, so, uh, what do you think's happening here? Uh, this is the book one that I progressed up to after months of lockdown loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I believe this is the time machine that's been unveiled so that they can redo 2020. There's a 50-50 chance that it will end all life in the universe, but that's been considered an acceptable loss. I I think this is Henry Hoover, um, but he got after he got COVID, so. (laughs) Fucking hell, a steampunk Henry Hoover. (laughs) I believe this is what the newly appointed... Nambian Governor Adolf Hitler is just calling a coffee maker. That's what <laughs> just a coffee maker. The new screen revealed. Uh, this is this is a doomsday device that has been invented to take reality back to a more tolerable time than now. Queen's <laughs> doing fine, hospital staff says. <laughs> If they reopened that machine in Switzerland that they said might create a black hole and end the world, they're like, right, get it back out, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, I, think far off, I reckon that um, Switzerland is panicked by universe ending particles. You know, just- <laughs> <laughs> we promise this one's going to create a black hole. We're doing our best. <laughs> well, you know, if it does, who cares at this stage, really? That was my joke. <laughs> Oh, that was my joke. That was. <laughs> that's why I got a boyfriend to explain my joke. Wait, why am I supporting you? You're on the opposite team. Yeah, you bitch. That's why I stole your joke. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, next picture. Uh, can we have the next one, please, Sam? We have another picture. Ah, oh. Merry Christmas. It's Dominic Goings. <laughs> uh, uh, is it Durham Optician wins world record for shittest her meat delivery? <laughs> <laughs> Is, that uh, is the Dominic. competitive uh, award as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real top of his field. Yeah. <laughs> For once. Lion, uh, lion, that... pants on fire. Ah. Oh. oh, 
Uh, is it, having only achieved a third of this goal, Cummings begins hunts for big fish and little fish. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Well done. Um, yeah. This is uh, the ghost of Christmas future finally starting to chip away at Boris Johnson's resolve. <laughs> <laughs> this is a deleted scene from Love Actually. <laughs> carrying his box out. Hey. No, is it... Is it dominicking the office supplies from Downing Street? <laughs> In fact, uh, the love actually remake it, is just not coming along very well. Uh, <laughs> these until one of these gets a point. <laughs> <laughs> Cummings and Goings, I don't know. It's a um, real good Christmas scene. It's not just Santa who's getting the sack. <laughs> is it, uh, is it, uh, it? Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, is it Cummings acquires new job as low battery delivery drone? <laughs> is it cardboard box removes bag of shit from <laughs> Downing Street? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the materials being removed from Downing Street and a box. <laughs> <laughs> box is appropriately small when you consider he's got to fit all his accomplishments into it. <laughs> I think it's just Pandora's box getting ready for 2021 to fuck us over. Oh, the... oh, we've got to learn. What, no, oh, we've got to learn what he's bad. Look what I found. We're going to learn what he's got on Boris Johnson, and I can't wait because it's going to be worse than pig fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dominic, it... come in. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, is it no... is it number ten ejects number two? <laughs> is it Dominic Cummings can't wait to get home and stare directly into the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> <laughs> because that's also a Nazi joke. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this is this is such a staged kind of Dominic Cummings leaving picture. It is. Like like holding the box, happening to have photographers out as he left through the front door it. rather than different accent. It's, it's poetic. like the political equivalent of like doing a big Facebook post about how you're not cheating on your missus anymore when you're like blatantly still texting your side bitch. Like <laughs> I'm going on a social media break, everybody. Okay. <laughs> I'm going on a social media break. <laughs> I like how you did that room, slightly like, as no. Trump as well. Just like, that just comes naturally now. Okay, here we are. What do you think? What do you think is going on here? Is, is it, it oh. how much fruit and veg I've eaten since the first lockdown? <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, is this my usual diet by week four of the Edinburgh Fringe? <laughs> <laughs> is it the cursed hall of a wrong magpie? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I believe this is the content of Dick Whittington's handkerchief. <laughs> oh, that's just really sad. <laughs> is, is this... Oh, is it a <laughs> stop? Anna, we didn't catch any of that. Oh, sorry, you carry on. I was just going to say, was, is it a snowman murder during the weekly shot? <laughs> <laughs> this is what he left behind. Is it the contents of my handbag, which I think is perfectly reasonable, and then complain when I get backache? <laughs> um, we should pelt it... the government once we run out of rotten tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Damn for that. Is it £35 worth of food? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. close enough. Is... <laughs> I mean, it's not, but you clearly know what we're getting at, so I'm going to give you the point there. Um... <laughs> Oh, that's that's um that's Keir Starmer reacting whenever the media continues to run an anti Corbyn story. Mm. <laughs> is this uh is this NASA getting excited because the resurgence of like Nazism means they're gonna get more scientists? This is the first interplanetary YMCA. <laughs> yeah. People are outraged because they got it the wrong way around. <laughs> I thought this was actually um, Primark staff getting really excited because they'd finally sold the last NASA jumper. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite thing... Him? Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, ahead. my favourite thing about this picture is, like, the people in the back who look like they're going in for a hug, but then, like, realise they're supposed to be social distancing and just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the issue that I've had writing for this one is that even though I can clearly see it's NASA, if I see a flight of that bed, I assume they're bigots. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's America. Like, 
I'm sure NASA has some bigots. Is it? Is but, it... but Nazi scientists. Yeah, they definitely it... have some bigots. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is it NASA scientists celebrate gender reveal of rocket? It's a boy. <laughs> NASA I, I... are literally Team Rocket. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do know this one. This is the this is the 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 footage of the paid actors furthering the conspiracy that Mars exists. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's about that rover thing. That's all I know. It's about that rover, Is it a drone? Oh, which, what, oh, it's a rover with a drone, and it's got more drills and better cameras and shit. Yeah, what NASA have done is they've sent a rover 200 um, from the 1980s in mint condition to <laughs> the moon uh, and then to Mars after that to see if it can pick anything up. Because they're reliable and they don't rust as easy. Oh, so, did you know, this, is actually, this is actually the first time Joe Biden sent a drone to something that isn't a war-torn country. <laughs> Is he the bad guy as well? Oh, don't know. If there's okay, life on Tom. Mars, they'll find it, they'll kill it, and pretend it's an enemy combatant. <laughs> I, I do actually know this news story. I know that we're supposed to do banter beforehand, but I'm too excited. I have a banter one. <laughs> don't break the illusion. Do banter first. Pretend you don't know. And then no, no, no. Let me just tell you. Let me tell you the new story because because I'm really proud of myself. We for need the it. points, please, please. So basically, okay, fine. Right. So what happened is that that puppy, right? No. It sold its cow, and it got given <laughs> some magic beans. And then when it planted the magic beans, this massive beanstalk grew with these big flowers at the top. And so the puppy it climbed all the way up to the top, and you can even see the little hand grips that the puppy made to climb up to the top. And then when it got there, it met this big giant and it was like, oh no, are you a puppy eating giant? And the giant was like, of course I'm not. Who would eat a puppy? And now they're really good friends. And that is, of course, Jack Russell and the Beanstalk. (laughs) (laughs) So you know what? I'm going to give you a point, even though that's not the right answer, because that was... (laughs) My absolute favourite part of that was halfway through when Eddie realised what joke he can make and just sat there really really patiently just went, wait until they're finished. My dad's sense kicked in. My dad's sense (laughs) was just like, oh shit, there's a pun! Fuck! Oh! Oh, God! Can Can I say the real answer? It, what do you mean the real answer? Yeah, we just we decided <laughs> well, I mean, that's the real answer. Now it's time for Bants. Get a I feel like he's only got the sun files to distract from his very dangerous looking drain pipe. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's not looking good. Yeah, doctors why, are why furious at man's DIY pipe? fix. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is a. I don't think we should be laughing at this, guys. It's clearly world's smallest man and dog grow average size. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm offended at your jokes. <laughs> Very ableist. You're right. Man, ca- man catches cutest burglar with the first public hanging since 1868. <laughs> if they're, they're average-sized sunflowers, mm-hmm. why is his window so big? It, oh. It's a shed. It, it's it's he's just <laughs> he's fucked up the 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 DIY of it. Like, it's like I it's, see the flaws in your joke. I don't think it works. No, nah, it's... <laughs> it's a very cute pup. Right, do we know what's going on here? Obviously yes. not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to take a wild sunflower, but it's big sunflowers. Big ass sunflowers. It is big ass sunflowers. Stars. Man grows big sunflowers. <laughs> Dot is also proud. <laughs> Dot is also proud. Dog. <laughs> Man builds big build. Man grows big sunflowers. Man but has a very cute dog who we want to show off. No one will look at the dog. No one cares about the dog. So he's grown some big ass sunflowers so that he can show off his dog. Is that it? Uh, no, but um, the big sunflowers is right, and I'm bored of this, so I'm just going to say yeah. No, but, uh, you I already gave us a point, so you can't take it away now. Yeah, no, that's fine. Is he growing opium? Is this a heroin farm? <laughs> This he's made a real error if he's growing <laughs> growing heroin with sunflowers. Wait, Just to give him a... Oh, I I'm, mean, thinking poor the I'm thinking of poppies. Never mind. <laughs> he's really... So somebody's really no, done well, him. That's over. a puppy? That's a puppy. <laughs> 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 I thought Yes. So yeah, this is this is a story about about uh, Richard Hope pictured there, who has grown the world's tallest sunflower at twenty six feet. So it's almost as big as Tom's cock. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, that would make me pass out, though. Yeah, it would. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's not that's not pleasant for anybody. No, it's not pleasant for anyone. But, I was I mean, really excited. You problem. were complimenting people. I was like, oh. <laughs> and then and Tom just went and shot you down. 
Take away a point. I'll teach so you rude. to be nice to me. Don't take compliments very well. I'm very mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. At the end of that round, Kirsty and Tomstein both have one point. So, yay. Yeah. So everything no, everything to play for. Wait, uh, we have two. Uh, no, because you didn't really you, you you just kept saying big sunflowers. That wasn't technically the answer. <laughs> so. It kind of was though. Wait, hold on. The headline is man grows biggest sunflowers. We say big ass sunflowers. Well, and actually, the headline? actually, the headline is that the man grew the tallest sunflower, and he said the biggest. So, <laughs> mm, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, English is stupid. Don't play. <laughs> if, if, you, if you take act, in, um, square meter wise, it's not the biggest sunflower. It's just the height of it is tall. It's, it's the uh, eight feet Guinness, of, uh, Guinness, they, They've given out so many records now that Guinness have to be so specific. It's. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's it's like like a thick ass sunflower. sunflower. <laughs> oh, the girthiest it's sunflower. It's a sunflower, but with a trunk of a redwood. Oh. <laughs> Hideous. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, so at the end of that round, one point each. So, uh, fuck off. <laughs> um, uh, after that round, Kirsty's team's still on one point, and Tom's team is somehow on three points. Oh wow! Uh, uh, we are going to have a quick break now, so we'll come back in ten Can minutes. Say, Tom's oh, team may be on three points, and we may be on one. But I literally seen you give Tom's team one point just for not being racist. Now, personally, think that's fucking <laughs> 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 yes, but it's impressive when white people aren't racist. <laughs> As a middle class white man, I am subverting expectations. All right. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're going to have a break now so we can discuss this matter further. Um, we'll be back in, uh, in in about 10 minutes. I mean, I say that we, we, we're still going to be here chatting, but we will resume the games in about 10 minutes. So if you would like to go to the toilet or... or I'm, I'm not your mum. Do what you want. Uh, let's just see you in 10 minutes. Oh, I thought you were my mum. Uh, I'm oh. afraid I'm not. But, uh, Damn it. It's a shame. A bit. People still see us? Yep, people can still yeah. see us. Okay, so now's not a good time to have a wank. No, I mean, I mean, if you go into another room, um, <laughs> or if you don't mind us getting taken off YouTube, or if if you really want to see how committed YouTube are to their community standards, can, yeah. can I have a really subtle wank then? Just yes, like yes, yes, you can have a really oh. subtle wank. Well, you're yeah. you're only head and shoulders, Bobby. So as long as you stay only head and shoulders, you'll get away with it. I excuse me. I've used more shampoo brands than Head and Shoulders in my day. <laughs> oh, I haven't it. used that since the dandruff days of my fifth year. Wordplay jokes. I love it. I love it. I'm always. I always wank subtly. Anyway, no one can tell if I'm wanking or if I'm really upset. <laughs> Is that a really subtle way of telling us that you're wanking right now? <laughs> no one can tell. Apart from the fact. That I've said so. <laughs> Gave the game away. It's not as subtle when you didn't <laughs> say it. Right, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a slash. <laughs> let's, 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 I suddenly thought she was like, "All right, I am gonna have a wank." <laughs> let's, let's have a look I at some mean, of these my comments. My bed is yeah. just here, and my sex box is up there, so I could. But I'm not because <laughs> I respect you. I respect you. <laughs> I love that it's just the sex box. It doesn't. Doesn't have like a, a euphemism or a nickname. The sex box. It's Just literally the sex box. It's in the most obvious place above my wardrobe. So <laughs> take that as you will. I <laughs> Not Can like people currently see what we're talking about. Will people have known that I just said that my sex box is right on top of my yes. wardrobe? Oh yeah, no, you, people will know that. Yeah, no, that was oh, completely broadcast, and it's on YouTube forever now, Bobby. Okay, so for any friends watching, if you ever come round to my house, my sex box—it's <laughs> the white box with the gold with the golden spots. But it's, well, I I put batteries in there for an obvious reason, batteries. Um, so it's slowly evolved into now the sex slash tech box. Uh -huh. now, oh, okay, batteries in there. Let's put a Wii remote in there because Wii remotes <laughs> need batteries. Hey, and if you're brave enough. Both. Yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Have you the ever done this? Feature, the vibration yeah. feature. Yeah. Have you ever done that <laughs> thing where you like take two vibrators of similar size? Kind of like pop them on a wooden floor and turn them on and make them race. Yes, yes. 
Yeah. It's just great. It's just a great bit of fun. Like, <laughs> I also wonder that, like, if you had like a black sack full of uh, vibrators and you put them all on at the same time, would they vibrate at such a frequency that they would all like vibrate in the same direction, or would it be like different directions and it would ultimately stay stationary? Uh, well, a recent scientific study has actually proved that um, a black sat full of vibrating dildos is the secret to infinite renewable energy. So they just power well, each other. Exactly. You sit on that black sack and you'll have energy for days. <laughs> <laughs> no, not after about five minutes. You're a bit as well. You'll, awesome. re- you'll be really like shagged out, but then you'll be like, oh, that was the best <laughs> one I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I shouldn't have this. Uh, how, how's, how's, how's the football, Andrew? Half time. What's the um what, what what was the score at half time? Is it still nil nil? I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend someone scored. It's still nil nil, so I'm gonna pretend someone scored. <laughs> <laughs> our next round is propaganda. This one, each of our panelists will be taking the role of the editor of a different uh, publication. And we're going to be feeding them some uh, new stories, which they have to then report in their own style. So we today we have Kirsty, who is the editor for Skeptic Magazine, uh, Katie, who is uh, the editor for the Alternative Press, uh, Raoul is the editor for the BBC, uh, Ben is the editor for Nan Summer's Catalog. Uh, that's yeah, I, they have editors, don't they? Fuck it, they probably do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they have catalogs, apparently. Well, I. <laughs> I, that reminded me just really quick. I nearly made like sort of a music video rap when I worked at Ann Summers to publicize one of the sex toys. Like I was oh, genuinely man. with one of the people who's quite high up in the Ann Summers party like thing. Um, and I was yeah. like, yeah, we're going to make a rap. And I had it down. I was like freestyling in the middle of the sex toy aisle to proper going for it. It never happened. But I, really, <laughs> I feel like it would be a great addition to my show reel. <laughs> Yeah, I like I, it has to be a bit. just do it gorilla style. Do it, yeah. Am I? I I would definitely buy a sex toy off you if you did a rap for me, Ben. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so yeah. okay, uh, your first headline, everyone, is uh, U.S. trial of AstraZeneca jab confirms safety. A little prick is sometimes better than none at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the Royal Mag- uh, Royal Life magazine would just go with U.S. trial of AstraZeneca jab confirms royal family very much not racist. <laughs> <laughs> kind of their go-to at the moment. <laughs> uh, well, this jab was not tested by um, the most reliable source of medication <laughs> testing, which is, of course, Pac-Man. Um, so... <laughs> So uh, our headline is going to be Vax Lax Pax Crack for Max Trax. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Boris Johnson announces the UK is to close all travel corridors from 18th of January to protect against the risk of the new strains of COVID-19. Top 10 British pastries to get you through the travel ban. 10, the miniature pork pie. 9, the miniature pork pie. 8, <laughs> the miniature pork pie. 7, a Gred steak bake. 6, the miniature pork pie. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got more? Five, the miniature pork pie. <laughs> Four, the miniature pork pie. Three, the miniature pork pie. Two, the miniature pork pie. And one, um, a proper large pork pie that you have as a wedding cake if you're a bit of a twat. <laughs> <laughs> the story is Japanese billionaire seeks eight people to fly to the moon. Japanese million- billionaire puts eight people in orgy shoot to the moon. <laughs> you can't put eight people in a tight container and expect them not to fuck to pass the time. <laughs> I actually had to Google this, like how long would it take to get to the moon, so I could kind of work out how much sex like two people have <laughs> together. Because I learned once that, well, this is based off what I what I know is heterosexual te- sex takes between three and five minutes. So you know if if every three to five minutes was filled with heterosexual couples doing it, then they'd have so much sex. If it was just two homosexual people, it would be from the moment you departed to the moment you got to the moon and you still won't have orgasmed. 
<laughs> but I didn't find out how long it takes to get to the moon. There's no, there's no, there probably is. got distracted. I just, well, I got, yeah, I just got thinking like, how many orgasms could you have in that space? And it, it'll never, it'll how never would it go. I'll never, it'll never be enough. Royal Life magazine have gone with uh, Japanese billionaire uh, confirms royal family very much not racist. <laughs> <laughs> They've gone with. Uh, uh, I love it. The BBC have gone for Japanese philanthropist and <laughs> a significant proportion of his own hard-end fortune helping space refugees start a new life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, here at Retro Gamer Magazine, um, we noticed the Japanese billionaire uh, didn't ask Jetman from the classic ZX Spectrum game Jetpack. Um, <laughs> so we've gone with Japanese billionaire Lax Packs Crack for Max Tracks. Uh, <laughs> um, I, so I'm doing the math. And, um, <laughs> um, so um, I've, I think I've done it. Bear in mind, I um, played Cards Against Humanity right before my Masters GCSE, so this might not be right. So if if people had average cisgender sex, which is I've put it down as three minutes because let's let's be let's be real. Um, that's eight. I don't think this is right, but we're going for it. That's eighteen orgasms an hour. So that's four hundred and thirty <laughs> a day, which means. Within those three days, it's possible for one person to have 1,296 orgasms. And that can all be achieved using this dildo from the Ansomers catalog. <laughs> uh, Ian, this might be a future speedrunning project for you. Take the signal. I just did some mad maths there, people. Like, <laughs> where is my math tutor now? <laughs> Gorillas at San Diego Zoo to be vaccinated. My mind was too clad during mine. Like, I looked at this and just went, Harambe would have wanted this. And that's all of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm still... That was the shot he should have had. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Harambe that's all... jokes in 2020. What year is this? What the fuck is <laughs> I, I, like, it's it's still raw, Johnny. Like, <laughs> it's still, still, <laughs> still raw. <laughs> And I, I mean, it was definitely, a definitely, point. definitely the worst thing to happen in the whole of 2016. That was. I know, <laughs> and I and I and I sat there and I went, no, something to relate to the Anne Summers catalog. And my brain just went, but think about Harambe, how much <laughs> <you've got> <laughs> happen. Like it's you know, it, his legacy lives on. We're really saving the gorillas. And I went, Do you know what, <laughs> Harambe would have wanted this. Uh, Thorntons to shuttle stores. Thornton's not as good as Castlevania. <laughs> Uh, I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> Nothing's as good as the old stuff, you know? <laughs> off, off, off of the back of, of Ian Thornton's to shut all stores, but no worries, they're releasing a Netflix series soon. <laughs> uh, Thornton's goes from Turkish delight to British disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, the Ann Summers catalogue said their edible penis sales set to rise following the closure of Thornton's. <laughs> uh, Thornton's to shut all stores, meaning now if you want to put delicious chocolate in your mouth, you're going to have to come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Says the BBC. <laughs> we mean BBC, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There we are. There it is. <laughs> and are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm discovering so much. <laughs> uh, this next round is this just in. We're going to be giving each team the first sentence of a new story and they have to carry it on line by line, uh, person by person. And uh, your first line is, a man got a huge picture of Boris Johnson tattooed on his stomach and says he has no regrets. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you an order. We'll go Kirsty Rosanna. Uh, Anna. Uh, it comes as no surprise to learn the man has also tested positive for COVID. <laughs> His wife, to whom he's been married for 47 years, had some opinions about this. She said... You know what? I didn't like your belly button before the tattoo, but now... <laughs> <laughs> and then she went on to... Um, get a matching tattoo uh, in the same place of 
uh, Bolsonaro on the back of one of his legs, on the back of his other leg, he tattooed a bum. Um, we don't. <laughs> Getting it, walk up a bum on the back of his leg. But you know what? Underneath the bum, there's a lovely motto. Um, uh, it, it is a, a declaration of his commitment to turning his entire body um, into just a tapestry of arseholes, starting with <laughs> Boris moving on to a literal bum. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, he has expressed a vague aim to go meta with it and tattoo an actual arsehole onto his uh, neck, but he has so far not found a tattooist who is willing to fulfil that brief, whether due to COVID or otherwise. <laughs> but after COVID, you know what? Bumble's everywhere, left, right and centre. He's thinking of extension to his skin, another arm, just right by you, just so we can get some extra bumholes. <laughs> the light does. This is the dream. <laughs> I'm going to end that there. That was a beautiful poetic way to end it. <laughs> that was uh, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Lyrical stuff. It uh, was. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, so, Ed, your first line is, researchers in Australia claim they have, they, they have recorded the fastest ever internet data speed. I can tell you this. It wasn't Virgin Media. <laughs> 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 Not a joke. That's just... That's just my contribution to the discussion. <laughs> Are you with Virgin Media? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I'm going to give you two points for that. Um, to be honest, it was going to be quite hard to completely deviate from the story because it was basically in the first line. Essentially, uh, various uh, teams in uh, of, uh, Australian universities have logged a data speed of 44.2 terabit. Um, terabits per second, which could download a thousand HD movies in less than a second, or watch a movie in Disney Plus with only having to pause to buffer twice. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, uh, Jonathan Moore has commented uh, in reference to my joke about Disney Plus saying, that's not speed, that's bandwidth. Uh, and so I do apologize for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why I didn't expect anyone to call me out on that. Like, if any audience is going to get that, it's going to be us. Your first line is, if I can find the first area. Uh, an investigation has been opened after a manatee in Florida, at uh, Florida, Florida, <laughs> uh, River, Florida, uh, Florida River, had the word Trump written on its side. Sorry, can you repeat that? Yes. Yeah, no, I, I, I read that terribly. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> that can't be real. An investigation has been opened after a manatee in Florida River had oh, the word Florida. Trump written on its side. Because it was in Florida. Of course that happened in Florida. That's where everything happens. Such as. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's believed that the obsession with Trump is because uh, people in Florida are in an echo the dolphin chamber. <laughs> yes. uh, A plus. <laughs> I didn't mean to just to go um, However, some people have argued that it's actually a game of manatee telephone game. <laughs> uh, when asked his opinion on um, having Trump's name brandished on his side, the dolphin said, <laughs> Ow. Which, which translates to. <laughs> you know, initially, I wasn't a fan, but I did some research. And actually, you know what? I think he's doing a lot of things for fish. <laughs> so I'm I'm well into it and I'm quite annoyed that manatees aren't allowed to vote but then again there is a lot of gerrymandering going on and I'm not sure this should be a priority um, but if we could get that scene to at some point that would be great cheers the manatee <laughs> cheers the manatee his name <laughs> you're just signing off oh, okay. <laughs> right I'm gonna end that one they there. emailed Thank him because of just <laughs> uh, Richard's keeping the point for that round. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you know, you know, you've got like infinite points, right? No, there's no magic points tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's trickle down pointer, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, that's, that's a really funny joke in, in, in 2017 theory. points. Like, even if they a million points each, it means nothing. Like, there's no I wanna... If they're not a finite resource, then Johnny can't encourage us to fight over them. Exactly. Johnny, I want to know what happened to all the PPE you bought with those points. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. So, be, so because it's not a finite... But if there's not a finite one, then we can't fight over it. Therefore, Johnny doesn't have the power. Does that mean that Johnny is like Quizmaster Capitalist? Oh, God, yeah. no. No, never call me that well, again. I'm just, you know, just for socialism, maybe you should be a bit more generous with the points. Universally, the only way to get yourself out of this is by Tom, giving are, us are we going to team up and, and overthrow capitalist Johnny? Yes. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> are we realising there's more of us than there are of them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, there are. We're going to seize the means of production. It's just your webcam. We're going to seize the points and run off to live in our little point-sharing utopia. Fine, okay. If you want communism, you can both have one point. So it's on two walls. <laughs> this is the same. Let's move on. Okay, it's fine though, we're both beating the audience. That's fine. Uh, I'm giving <laughs> you one point. Who has one point? <laughs> okay, fine, yeah. Kirsty's team has two, Tom's team have two, Richard has only one point. But uh, Richard, uh, Richard earned his without whining. So <laughs> I called him the 99%, but with the numbers, it's more like the 20%. Uh, the next round is German fishing, so it'll be Kirsty's team first. So yeah, the way this round works is we take uh, a, a, an extract or a comment from uh, someone who's angry about something. Uh, we replace all the nouns with nouns, a certain number of nouns up in the dictionary, and you have to try and decipher what it is. Um, right, okay, Kirsty's team, I'm sending it over in chat now. Cool. So yours is... Um, I used to be a farce until your political opticians come out. Mutineer is my sanitarium, and the last form I want to hear is a political bumpkin when I'm listening to, to Mutineer. As far as I'm concerned, you and Pipe are completely done. Keep rushing your muck and ruining your farce bassoon. Oh, I have an idea. That's a really fun there. sentence to say. A farce yeah. bassoon is a great name for a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how Ruby Core like writes all her uh, poems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the, the, the full statement is: uh, this was a reply to Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine. So you you basically got it. Uh, I used to be a fan until. Also, I want to point out it, it is used to be a fan as well, not used. Uh, that that is not a typo. That's that's what it said. Uh, until your political opinions come out. Music is my sanctuary, and the last thing I want to hear is political bullshit when I'm listening to music. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you and Pink, that was the P, are right. completely done. Keep running your mouth and ruining your fan base. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you a point for that, because you were basically on point. What did, they, what did they think the machine was in Rage Against the Machine? <laughs> <laughs> What, did they think it was an actual machine that they were raging? <laughs> they were probably mad at the. Uh, it was the McFlurry machine at McDonald's. <laughs> they were so upset. I get the anger, like anytime I go. It comes out too cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we just got a comment from uh, Shane Curtin. I would hope that Fast Bassoon's first album is called Political Bumpkin. Tom, so uh, just make sure you. I would oh, listen to that album. Hey, I, had, I, know, I know this. I already know it. Uh, yeah, you already can, know can, can, I, <laughs> can I read it out first? Thank you. Sure. Uh, um, your quote is, Feminism was established to allow, uh, uh, so as to allow unattractive woodworms accountability to the mainstream of softwood. Right. <laughs> would anyone have three yes, words to translate? Know. You get a point per word, apparently. I so. think it's women. I think it's access. And I think it's society. Yeah, no, that's it. There you are, you got it. Fantastic. Yay! Yay. Yeah. Uh, three points to Tom Steve. I thought you said you were going to stop Tom. giving Tom the easy ones. I never said that. What? When did I say that? We are learning disabled on this team. I'm what? a dyslexic. Exactly. Tom's a dyslexic. This is an accessible, non able yeah. comedy night. Uh, that was still exactly. hard, even though I've read that tweet already. I, I, was, looking at, I was looking at Woodburn's accountability and thinking it sounds like a prog band from the 70s. And I just drifted <laughs> off from there. I wouldn't have got the answer right. <laughs> so like if we're doing a point per word, then Kirsty's team gets six points. No, no, we're, we're, we're not doing a point per word. I, I was just I saying. I think that's only fair. You get three I don't. points for each one. Uh, but there, there are. God, listen ones. to the Tory maths going on on this stream. What is <laughs> happening here? Ash, I would, I would, Ash, I would rather you called me the T slur than. Well, I guess. <laughs> I'd rather you called me a fag than called me that. <laughs> right, I'd rather Kirstie you called me the T. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Kirsty team, your next one. Oh, we've got more. Oh, there's more. Do we have more? Yes, that's what I was trying oh, to say. Oh, dear. Uh, yours is... What is I guess this? That... Oh, 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 we're only I... going to get half a point if we get this one correct. <laughs> <laughs> I guess... I guess there'd be some um, some percolate in the rerun eternity who will now think, yeah, we need to do this. We need to provide a homosexual. We need to provide a comforting <laughs> attachment for the uh, uh, blocked out slur, uh, which Umbi says would rather be called than a Tory. Why have they, uh, why have they sent some... and, and And the gay comparison. But those percolates are for the denial anyway. Why have they censored titty? I really just want... <laughs> I want a line of t-shirts that say we need to provide a homosexual. But like I know I really love <laughs> provide a homosexual in all caps. That's what I want now. <laughs> I can be what is vulva yeah. denial? <laughs> and how can you deny I, I, I like that... just deny what a vulva is? It's just no, I don't believe it exists. No. Well, that, that's that's just tra- medical gatekeeping me- medical gatekeeping in the uh, transgender community. That's vulva denial. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it just um, again, it just sounds like uh, music groups to me. Johnny, there's so many words here. I don't know where to start. Well, uh, you could try starting at the beginning. And in fairness, I, I, vulva I, is the fate word. I'll give you a clue. That's Volvo. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not Volvo. So, I'm guessing it starts with I. I guess or I guarantee. I, I guarantee, guarantee. Yep, that's right. I guarantee there'd be some percolate in the I don't know Republican. Republican is right. Uh. Uh, yeah, we need to do this. We need to provide a home. We need to provide a comforting. Uh, would that be yep. people? I guarantee uh, there'd be some people. Is, is, is people? Yep. So in the I guess Republican. Be some people in the Republican. Uh, what do you think eternity is? What a question for a quiz show. <laughs> what do you think eternity? eternity? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. right here we are. So Tom, your your passage is um, funny how thongs work. So I'm not allowed to speak my minibus, but all of you internet washcloths that like sorcerers about blotch, gym slits, and debt all have become scorchers that know it all bicker. Um, just stay at homosexual and shiver. I will stay at homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> stop listening. Stop listening to debt method. It's not for you then. We followed the check requisition reiterations and everything was done legal. We were happy to finally play live again and earning some monocle, which we didn't do for uh, which we didn't for eight more. This so-called virus quotation marks <laughs> has not been active since April, so we went for it in a reasonable weapon. To all the haters, keep hating, make your screenshots, you cry babies. So uh, it's what good to know that, on here? It's good to know that the virus is just like my career and hasn't been active since April. <laughs> and it's so cold. <laughs> Fantastic. So this was uh, this is a Facebook post from death metal band uh, Pestilence, who performed a show much to the controversy of people due to the pandemic. Now, while as an artist I can appreciate the need to perform gigs where viable, I don't think this was their most eloquent way of of of, uh, of necessarily putting that across. I don't think putting the word virus in quotation marks really did them any favours. I mean, are we are we are we calling <laughs> the death metal band pestilence art? I mean, <laughs> yeah. if, there, if there was going to be a death metal band that was going to flout the rules of a virus, it's going to be one called <laughs> pestilence. <isn't it? laughs> I, I, I pestilence, and then just being like, uh, viruses aren't real. Like <laughs> <laughs> this so-called virus. <laughs> <laughs> Weird, a real virus, and then... but we got something a little different for Kirsty Steam this time. So uh, you gave us something is... a little different last time, and it was like a book. <laughs> <laughs> it's Usually, we de- get a tweet. <laughs> it is to deal with my dyslexia, so it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> um, but here is your extract. Need to translate. Sam has put that in the chat for you, and I assume it will be coming up on the screen at some point. Um, if <laughs> Oh, I like the capital. I, I like the capitalized <laughs> nouns. Thank you for the for the accessibility. I appreciate it. Oh, right. oh, I know this. So yeah, uh, <laughs> here it is. So it is uh, a young woodpecker wearing a hijab was watching them talk from an orange secretary general. She had <laughs> large, slim, lighter brown eye washes. Assuming somebody really did enter the housemaid on the fourth, I have to <laughs> say a burka is a bloody good weather of getting in and out without bellow recognized. Can you think of another weather of totally concealing your fact- factotum and Valero that wouldn't make percussionist championship you? Uh, and they were carrying a halal talon. Allegedly, was his last Mecca halal? Uh, is that why the, the kind removed the gyroscopes? 
And this woodpecker could have been a mandrill. Um, do you guys want to make some jokes? Because I know what this is and where it's from. I, I wonder <laughs> what mandrill could be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, it's, I, I mean, I've not got any factotum material. I've got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I can't even. I'm just trying to work out if I, I have no idea whatsoever on this one. Uh, assuming somebody <laughs> read it. Anything. Reading this is a lot like when I was listening to Popes do the other game. <laughs> 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 it makes sense of what I was supposed to do with this. I mean, I I've worked with dementia. And I feel like I have it. Uh, read <laughs> this sentence. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's a nice bit about entering a housemaid uh, on the on the fourth. Um, that Ooh. bit's a bit. That's like a quite saucy. Um, <laughs> I don't know what a, a bolero is. Isn't it the dance with? Da, 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 oh, it's um, it's a it's a solero, but it's made out of bovril. Oh, oh, that you, sounds great. You, know, oh. you, you get them up north. You yeah. get them up, I'm a southerner. We don't yeah. do that. We now. put them on our chips to talk them down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so we make a, so allegedly was his last Mecca halal. Is that what, why the kind removed the gyroscopes and this woodpecker could have been a mandrel? Oh, I I mean, I I wouldn't even hazard a guess on this one. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. um, I think the word woodpecker is woman. Young woman was wearing a hijab, watching them talk from something. Um, so assuming somebody points. entered the house on the 4th, I've got to say a burk is a bloody good way of getting in and out without being recognised. Can you think of another way of totally concealing your face and body uh, that wouldn't make people... I don't know. Um, carrying oh, a halal so takeaway... Yeah. Allegedly was his last meal halal. This woman could have been a man. This is from uh, J.K. Rowling's shitty new book. Oh, okay. yep. yep, you are correct. Um, uh, you'll you'll get you get uh, a point from that. You uh, you can get another point if you manage to translate the ones that you hadn't managed to. What did I miss? Watching so, them talk. Our, our from... secretary general. So wa- watching them talk from uh, a young woman wearing a jab was watching them talk from an. Oh, ah, shit. (laughs) Horrible, sexy gear. (laughs) (laughs) From from an, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, okay. Ordinary Swiss. (laughs) (laughs) very <laughs> 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 not so yeah the, the, the full thing i'll read this uh also content warning for uh general transphobia and islamophobia uh stuff so the the full pe- uh text is a young woman wearing a hijab was watching them talk from an opposite seat she oh. had a uh, large sweet liquid brown eyes assuming oh, somebody really did for an sg them, <laughs> so was nice. yeah yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was um yeah it's a dirty trick to play johnny <laughs> That's just the way that the, the, the tool I used worked. Uh, I've got to say, a burk is a bloody good way of getting in and out without being recognised. Can you think of another way of totally concealing your face and body that wouldn't make people challenge you? As if people wearing burkas don't get challenged frequently for wearing them. Uh, yeah. uh, and they were carrying a halal takeaway. How do you know? The, you can't possibly know. <laughs> you just it just says it. halal in big yeah. letters on the side. Like, oh, <laughs> smells like prayer cow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Three balloons with halal written on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, that's what young Muslim women in hijabs want to do, draw more attention to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just wearing like a, like a big hoodie that just says halal on it. <laughs> <laughs> halal to you too. Yeah. Halal, but like in the, the uh, Slayer font. Uh, <laughs> that's genuinely good. That's really good. Uh, it would be it... raining blood, so that's how you kill the animals to make them halal. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, allegedly, was his last meal halal? Is that why the killer removed the guts? And this woman could have been a man. Yes, this is an extract from the Turf Who Shall Not Be Named's new book about a serial killer <laughs> dressing dressing as a woman uh, to get away with killing women. Um, Unrelated note, there have already been at least 27 recorded fatal attacks against transgender people in 2020, most of them trans women, most of them not white. Transgender hate crimes recorded by police rose 81% in 2019 by using this platform as big as rolling to, perpet- to perpetuate the narrative that people uh, perceived as men in dresses are a threat to the lives of women. 
uh, openly broadcast justification of all these violent acts as a panic defense. At best, this book is a lazy, trope filled narrative in poor taste, but with Rowling's openly and publicly hostile views towards transgender women, it's hard to see this anything other than an incitement of violence against transgender women, uh, particularly as the GRA reform. Ha- uh, uh, has just been scrapped. Uh, make no mistake, the views perpetuated and platforms by TERFs have a real world consequences. And if you continue to overlook them, justify them, you are part of the problem. Um, sorry to get all serious for you on a moment there. I just really, <laughs> I just really needed to get that off my chest uh, to allow my breast room to grow on it. <laughs> uh, on with the show. Next, next round is called Biggest Dickhead of the Month. This is a um, this is a, a more chat type round where uh, each of the guests are going to tell us about um, who they think deserves a title of Biggest Dickhead of the Month. Uh, as a general rule, the kind of obvious ones like uh, Boris Johnson and like uh, Dominic Cummings are kind of ruled out, but just just kind of more kind of personal uh, uh, encounters of who they believe should be the biggest dickhead of the month. Um, so. Um, as Ed and Tom are last, one of them can go. For- I've been saying that every round so far. I, I, I'm not rubbing it in. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a visual aid to show uh, who in particular it is. But as some of you uh, may know, that there were the anti-mask protests in London at Trafalgar Square uh, over the past week, um, and uh, anti-masks is a dickhead thing anyway. I mean, I, but then somebody came along and brought a British Union of Fascists flag to it which of all the unions in the world the <laughs> union of fascists uh, the collective bargaining rights of fascists famous <laughs> for not wanting collective rights is very tricky um and it's just, it's like double dickhead in it you know what i mean like just because you don't want to wear a mask doesn't mean you have to be a fascist but now he's brought the flag along all of a sudden it, it's this baffling logic that it's like ah they're taking away my rights oh well what do you want to happen i want one person to take away my rights <laughs> 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 like a lot of conservatives, it was the they they had a problem with. They wanted yeah. to take the pronoun. It's he they want. I want him to take away my rights. <laughs> and only him. No yes. she. Yes, okay. absolutely. I was going to say I was specific in the, uh, in the pronoun they used there because uh, they're big misogynists. <laughs> okay, moving on to Anna Thomas, who is your dickhead of the month? Um, so my dickhead of the month is those poopery sprays. So we got one in the house recently, right? And like the fa- all the family's using it. It's a lemon sprayed one. Thing is, I never knew how awful it'd be to smell a nice smell, right? And then be like, oh, what's that? Oh, someone's just had a shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it smells like lemon limey. I'm never going to be able to have a Sprite again. And it's like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like, I've looked online as well, and they do, like, chocolate and, like, cookie flavours. Like, who wants that? Like, you know, it's dated, and it's going to start using that. So, you know, when you're, like, showing people around the house, oh, hold on, I'll just go have a shit, make it smell of cookies, not having that. It's <laughs> <laughs> and I first saw it, right? So I first heard, I didn't know. It just got introduced into the house. I thought there was this alien smell. I was like, what's that? We got it in clean. That's lovely. What's that? Oh, it's shit. Like, it's almost like, you know, like... um. Like you hear something nice, like a harp or something, you follow that sound. It turns out it's like, I don't know, a pile of dying cats or something. <laughs> or like, you know, <laughs> garages and things like that. You know, in the desert, it's like them, like instead of, you know, them thinking they see water and then they go closer, there's nothing. It's like that. But if they went closer and it was just a pile of shit. And <laughs> it's like, <laughs> And it's like, you know, I've never wanted to smell shit and go, that's lovely. And I'm thinking, is this the way people get into scatting? Because you know what? That's fair play. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> okay, that's your time. <laughs> as much as I'm enjoying hearing about that. <laughs> let's, let's have Red next. Red, who's your dickhead of the month? I mean, I just had a quick, a quick, a quick one for this. I think it's quite difficult because I think we're all dickheads, aren't we, at the moment? I think we, <laughs> we, we, we really are all pushing the boat in terms of how much of a, a dickhead <laughs> we each can be individually. Um, but I, I think we can all agree that right now, uh, the biggest threat to Western culture is Zack Snyder. I think that's fair. Ah! <laughs> I think that's a fair thing to say. Look, look, my, my thing with it is like, cause it's blown up on the internet and I just like, I, the narrative is quite strange because people saying like, it's 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 a masterpiece. And I, I, I genuinely think the only, Thing they the only reason they think it's a masterpiece is because it was a movie that was four hours long and they were able to pause it, have a shit, 
uh, eat some food in the middle, you know, like do whatever you want to do. Like, I think if they went into an IMAX cinema and were forced to pay 15 quid to see four hours of, of, of fucking Transformers again, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, the thing, it, it's better than Whedon's, but that doesn't mean it's a good film. It's a better film, but it's not a good film. I haven't got any jokes. That's I'm fine. That's your time now, annoyed. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. I, yeah, I've seen really converse. Like half of my Facebook are saying it's the best thing they've ever seen. The other half are saying that it is like either worse or just as bad as the original. So I've I've never seen either of them. So I have no horse in this race. But uh, I, I've not seen anyone this divided since you know. We became this divided as a nation. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like if if I wonder if there is a clean cut between Leavers and Remainers on it. No, there probably won't be. But I suppose maybe maybe if it's like equal on both sides, that can be the the sort of glue that brings us back together. This is like, oh, we're not all so different. Some of us hate Zack Snyder. <laughs> uh, but... Hello. <laughs> Sam has uh, just asked me to inform you all that in uh, honour of uh, Zack Snyder, the rest of the stream will be in four. Are you actually going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, he just cut off. See, it makes everything <laughs> shit. See, yeah. I knew that was coming. That's why I've been sat on this side of the frame for the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> I've no one spotted Johnny in the middle there. Yeah, he's near oh, red. He's what? What? Yeah. <laughs> They're just like chilling down there. I want one. That's not chilling. <laughs> no, could, I, could I have a little Johnny, please, so I can go like that and kind of high five them? <laughs> yeah, sure. If you, okay, that can be the prize for winning this. We'll 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 we'll, we'll sort that out. That's true. Okay, Raúl, you're up. Who's your nomination for Dickhead of the Month? Uh, my Dickhead of the Month is anyone who is currently using their time to hate on Prince Harry. Uh, because while I wouldn't particularly call myself a monarchist, I've seen a lot of people on my social me uh, news media feeds and they're sharing memes about how like Prince Harry is under the thumb. His uncle is a pedophile! Or how he's a snowflake now. His uncle is a <laughs> pedophile! And people genuinely like hate his ethnic minority wife for giving him ethnic influences. His uncle is in a grooming <laughs> gang! And really, I just, I can't empathise with why people think Prince Harry chatting a lot of shit right now is in any way an important thing to like debate because his uncle claimed he didn't sweat or like Prince <laughs> Harry making a positive judgment about Greta Thunberg because the judge in the Epstein case's son was shot dead. But I guess I would say that, that it's not because I'm a lefty, not because I'm a snowflake, but because I empathize with Prince Harry because Prince Harry, as British as he may be, is actually just the age old Indian tale of a man who married outside of his culture to a wife who made him realize that what his mum and the rest of society thinks isn't that important. Important. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and your time's off. Of the story breaking into spontaneous song and dance like Bollywood films do, it breaks into spontaneous tabloid rage uh, and social media rage like all great British stories do. And the <laughs> best thing about framing Prince Harry's life as an Indian tale is we can gloss over that bit where he was dressed in swastikas. <laughs> so Katie you're up next who's your dickhead yeah my dickhead is the moral ambiguity of harvesting the blood of horseshoe crabs I love it <laughs> I love it okay take it away give us okay. a point now before Dyson <laughs> there was Henry and before Roombas there were horseshoe crabs I have got some scientific illustrations <laughs> and I didn't know whether this would be mirrored or not so I wrote it backwards and backwards um, so <laughs> Horseshoe crabs are neither crabs or horses, but they are really cool and better than both of them uh, combined <laughs> because these bad bitches in the ocean predate the dinosaurs and are still alive and haven't changed any much because they achieved perfection before grass came into being. <laughs> and they're, they're very good. Um, they have 12 legs and they have 10 eyes and somehow move very slowly and can't see, um, but they're very cute and smooth. So I'll forgive them for that. But humans <laughs> harvest their blood. I'll repeat, we harvest their blood like the horny little vampires we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Um, it's blue, which 
isn't why we harvest it, but it's fun. Um, what it does do <laughs> is it clumps into a, like a lovely little crabby jelly when it comes into contact with bacteria. And it's really useful, useful for the pharmaceutical industry because if bacteria get in your medications, and, and then people get sepsis. And then what you're going to do, treat them with medications, which, oh, it's also got bacteria and it's bad. Um, what they used to do was test each batch on a rabbit. And if the rabbit died or got a fever, then they'd throw all of the medicine away and start again, which is incredibly wasteful for the medicine and um, the rabbit. And especially because rabbits can sometimes lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's had a rabbit, they'll know that if the, the hay is slightly up or you've got them a food they don't like, they'll just stop eating for a week and then you'll like nearly put them down and then you'll give them their old food and they're like, oh, it's happy now. Anyway, um, <laughs> So horseshoe crab blood, you just put like a drop into your medication, uh, like a little bit. And then if it clumps, th um, then it's got bacteria in and then you can just like sort it out. And so each drop of horseshoe gr um, crab blood saves like a whole rabbit. Um, so like each harvest of blood from a horseshoe crab saves like 30 to 50 rabbits from animal testing, which is good, um, especially like because if you're injecting them even if it doesn't have like sepsis causing bacteria in you're still injecting like insulin into a rabbit it's not going to have a good time um but i'll be honest you you, yeah. you hit a minute ages ago but i was really intrigued <laughs> <laughs> I'm really passionate about it because like people there no one knows how many of them there are and so they keep on taking the blood out um for pharmaceuticals and it is like, definitely good but they like have like a 30% death rate when you extract like blood from them and no one knows how many of them there are so they could go extinct and they've been around since before the dinosaurs and I think that would be sad and also they're cute. They are I, I very was gonna cute. say I give blood all the time and I'm fine. But... Are you calling, are you calling horseshoe crabs pussies? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes I am. <laughs> useful, useful pussies. <laughs> Right. Um, that that yeah, I I learned several things in in that very long minute. Um, so Sorry. yeah, it's okay. Uh, Khaled, Khaled, who is your dickhead of the month? Uh, I have two. You have Ooh. two. Okay. I have two. Uh, yeah. You want to name them and then I'll start the timer. That's so the my, my that's two, the balls of the month. My two are <laughs> Alfred the Great and uh, Saint George. Okay, Alfred the Great and and what have they done George? in the past month? <laughs> well, see, this okay. is the thing. It's, it's, now. it's not it's not really them in particular it's the people who keep invoking them <laughs> the saint george wasn't english for a start he was from syria so you're literally using a syrian to slag off syrians who are coming here um alfred the great is more like this whole like anglo-saxon indigenous people anglo-saxons are not indigenous to britain uh, the clue is in the name saxon saxony germany so they're like, we're Anglo-Saxons. We need to leave the EU because it's run by Germany when you're German. <laughs> and it's it's ridiculous. Like, Britain is Germany. You're, you're the same people. Um, and we are, Umbi, because Winter is a, is a Saxon name, Anglo-Saxon name. So we are, we are all German. We need to stop pretending that Anglo-Saxons are indigenous. The only people who get to say they're indigenous are people from Cornwall and Wales. And they don't because... I don't know what's going on in the schools there, but I don't think they know that they are. Um, uh, that's so, your time up now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Before we move on, really quickly, Khaled, do you know where my name comes from? Because I don't, and I'm genuinely interested, if you do. Summers. Yeah. It could come, it's, pro it's probably just given at some point because ah. one of your ancestors had a pleasant disposition. It's so funny. It's so I thought you were going to say one of my ancestors had a shit name and wanted something else. <laughs> it would either be it would either be that they were born in the summer or that they had like a nice they were um, they were. Khaled, it's Happy. so funny that you said like, oh, we're, we're, we're Germanic as if Winters wasn't just a surname I picked when I changed my first name because I like the sound <laughs> of it. <laughs> All right, I see. You like uh, the, you know, Anglo-Saxon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what does the surname Penis Pirate mean? <laughs> That's a 17th century Caribbean. <laughs> uh, right, Pope, you're up next. Who's your dickhead? Uh, mine's a pretty obvious one, but I've got a person. It's Lawrence Fox, uh, but I've got a personal <laughs> reason for Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Okay, uh, take it away. 
So I once knew a guy, and this is an absolutely true story. I once knew a guy who found a box of live iguanas by a motorway. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the iguanas uh, bit him and whipped him with their tails. But he he refused to get a tetanus shot because he believed that this has got a really elaborate conspiracy. He believed all shots administered by the NHS were government mandated and that any shot increased your iron count in your blood, which forced you to commit crime. And then... <laughs> uh, or, or, <laughs> This is true, or at the very least, like, behave erratically. And according to his conspiracy, this was an elaborate way for the government to engineer a crime epidemic, institute emergency powers, uh, and then consolidate their own power. Um, anyway, this guy was on Facebook expressing his support for Lawrence Fox's new political party. And if those are the people you're attracting, <laughs> maybe, maybe stop being you. <laughs> and that's that's your time thank you very much that's all right tom who's your dickhead uh so my dickhead of the month is a risky one uh my dickhead of the month is my drug dealer um, <laughs> <laughs> um he doesn't watch you on stuff don't no, worry no. It's, a, it's, a, it's a simple reason right so i was watching the news and i was delighted to be told by conservative mp um ben bradley that we are now able to pay for our drugs using food um, and I didn't really question it because you just, you hear that and you think, so, yeah, I probably saw that on an episode of Skins. Sounds about right. So I, I'm delighted. I'm going to be hard to pick up. I've got myself like a bag of port scratchings because my next door neighbor, her brother's a drug dealer and he knows people who supply the drugs and the going price for a bag of molly is gram for gram port scratching dust. So I'm there with my port scratchings, bag of Haribo to sweeten the deal. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and he won't take it he won't he won't take my hard-earned drug food and now i'm starting to think that if conservative mp ben bradley is lying about that then what else could the government be lying about <laughs> <laughs> oh so i you it took me like a few seconds after everyone else realized what you were doing to like <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking deep. I, uh... In your defence, Johnny, Tom told me this was what he was doing yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most prepared he's ever been. I just really wanted an excuse to do that sweet in the deal joke, even though it's awful. It's like, it doesn't fit into any sort of comedy that I do, so it's just like, I'm putting it in. <laughs> if I'd known you were going to do that, I would have discouraged you from doing this bit. Khaled, <laughs> right. who's your nomination? Um, so we can't do J.K. Rowling, but it's, it's related. My dickhead of the month is Harry Potter. <laughs> Okay. Can I go? Yep. Yeah, go. So my, my dickhead of the month is Harry Potter because he's held up as like this hero of the story, literally. But Harry Potter inherited an absolute fortune and then he succeeded through no talent, just through pure nepotism from Dumbledore. And then everyone is surprised that J.K. Rowling is a Tory. Like the, the clues are all there in <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> and like the real, the real hero of Harry Potter is Voldemort. Because <laughs> Voldemort grew up in an orphanage, became the most powerful wizard in the world through talent and hard work, and then was defeated by Harry Potter. Why was he defeated by Harry Potter? Because his mum loves him. <laughs> it's like the moral, um, the moral of, of J.K. Rowling is like, no matter how talented you are, no matter how, how hard you work, you, you will never be successful if your mum doesn't love you and you don't inherit a fortune. <laughs> so my dickhead of the week is Harry Potter because he's a little Tory rat. <laughs> he grows up to be a cop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he grows up to be a cop. He was and as we know, him, all cops are bastards. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Literally. Uh, I just want to so, yeah, hail Voldemort. <laughs> the, the, the fascism stuff was not good with Voldemort. I admit that, but <laughs> but before that, <laughs> but he's a true working class hero, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no offense to David, but middle class white people have an amazing ability to make everything about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> kind of proving your point. I still don't understand why being kept out of the middle class white person conversation. <laughs> I think it's... <laughs> I don't know. You just <laughs> I, I think just it's seems a, dummy. <laughs> it's, it's it's a combination of the, the, the accent and the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you're up next. Who is your dickhead of the month? Your time is starting um, now. 
you you might not have heard about mine because it's quite a localized news story, um, and it's localized to my flat. Uh, <laughs> Because what what's what's happened is the general manager at my uh, dentist has uh, struck me off uh, the caseload basically, um, because they said they say I missed three appointments. I don't think I missed one appointment. I've rang them three times to talk individually each time, and they say I've missed an appointment, and I haven't missed any appointments. And I'm telling you, Gene, I'm telling you, Gene, I am coming for you, Gene. You've seen how much wine I drink, Gene. I need those dental appointments. Your name might not be Gene. Sounds like a dentist's name. It could be. <laughs> could be Clive. Could be Patrick. Whatever your name is, I'm getting back in there and you are going to fix my teeth. Or I could just find another, I could, I could just find another dentist. <laughs> Andrew, no. I've we've been a double ad for three years, and I know you very well, and I love you very much. You did not make those appointments, and I can tell you that for free. Like, <laughs> I just did not go. No, I didn't. That's what I'm saying. I didn't book any appointments, Gene. Gene, <laughs> no appointments being done. Uh, Sean, who is your dickhead of the month? Uh, my dickhead of the month is my now ex-girlfriend. Now ex-girlfriend, wonderful. Good start. Uh, it's time starting now. Uh, so just to caveat this, um, it was no great love affair. It was just sort of like um, a little lockdown romance. Like we'd been seeing each other about three months. It wasn't, you know, she doesn't love my life or anything. It was just a thing. Um, but, you know, we had formed a government mandated support bubble together. Um, and she was meant to come round the other week and uh, cut my hair, actually. And <laughs> instead of doing that, she messaged me a paragraph on WhatsApp uh, breaking up with me so then I had a mullet and was back on tinder so I mean I just think that's dickhead behavior really um <laughs> just at least have the decency to come around and cut me air before you finish with me because now <laughs> I, I have got a bubble I'm on my own and I've got everyone else is in a bubble I've got to try and find a bubble and infiltrate one <laughs> about to pay 20 pound for clippers it's cost me but my head does look great. We've established that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just a dickhead, uh, really. Um, I, that's I your time care. now. I don't care, Johnny. That's exactly what she said. <laughs> Sean, you shouldn't be on Tinder. You should get on her and see if you can match with Graham Linehan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already on it, mate. I'm already on it. I don't oh. like it, though. That's, that's where I found it. Oh, I, I like uh, I like that Sean's basically become like a confidence trickster, but just to like not rob people, but to get haircuts. So like she'll, <laughs> she'll get relationships going. I've done three months. She'll be like, so how are you cutting hair? You're gonna cut your hair because I just need. It. And then the next day she's gone. You know she left them. <laughs> By the way, she she cut hair. That was the thing. So she was she's cut it already. She was, it was a long cut. cut it, but then she didn't come and cut it. She <laughs> broke up with me with a paragraph on WhatsApp. And do you know what else? She's got me fucking decorating pole, and I need to paint the ceiling, and I'm really pissed off. Oh, I've never heard a more lesbian sentence in my life than she's got my decorating pole. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pissed off. That was the and I'm pissed off about that. <laughs> By the way, Sean's really got my gate is she's got some of my painting equipment. That's you fucking oh, really she's done me. She's got the fucking black and decker. No, Sean, well, I'm glad I didn't lend her my sander because she had her eye on that to do the table. <laughs> oh, she's so got my like... angle grinder and she will rue the day that she can <laughs> Do you feel I'm getting the impression like this relationship was like you after a haircut and her after some DIY equipment. <laughs> I mean, That's the vibe I'm getting. I mean, on the periphery, on the periphery, kinky as hell. Yeah, we're yeah. all prostitutes, really, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? It's it's that thing. It's altruism. When nobody's in it for for like real reasons, you know. Yeah. It was just. I like, often I often get people going out with me just so I can do, launch a historical investigation of the back garden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we've got one more. We've got Umbi Winters. So, Umbi, who is your dickhead of the month? Well, like, much like Sean, I'm going to be using this opportunity to bitch about people in my personal life and using it as therapy. <laughs> Love um, it. So, my dickheads of the month are uh, the group of friends that make up my fantasy football league. Okay. Um, hang on a sec. That is not where I thought it. 
Okay, uh, your time starts now. <laughs> Take it away. So every year, my fantasy football league and I, we get together and we do funs and games around the time of the Super Bowl. We couldn't get together this year. So instead, I set up a friendship survey where I sent them all questions and they could answer anonymously. One of these questions was out of everyone else and you can pick multiple people. Who would you take a bullet for out of the group? And again, you did not have to answer with a single person. You could answer everyone or no one. The person who got the most votes uh, had got eight votes. Uh, he, understandably, he got the most votes. Everyone said he gets votes because, oh, he's got a daughter. He's got a, he's got a child. He should definitely get the most votes. People should take a bullet for him. He's got a child. Keep that in mind. Um, I got one vote. I got one vote out of 11 people voted for me. I also have a child. I got the least vote. Uh, we are the only two in the group that have children. He got the most votes. I got the least votes. There is someone who only joined the league this year. He got four votes. I've known some of these people for 10 years. This guy who joined this year got four votes. Also, he has my birthday. So now I don't even get to be someone in the group who gets to celebrate his birthday by himself. Themselves. Misgendered myself. That's how mad I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. Uh, that's your time. Thank you very much. Did any of these 10 other people complain about it on the internet? Because that could be the common variable. What? <laughs> Like, if any, did any of them complain about it loudly on the internet? Because that could be something to do with why they won't take a bullet for you. Oh, no, no, no. I totally get why they wouldn't take a bullet for me. For, like, when I make as many jokes about wandering into the sea as I do, they'll be like, well, that would just be a waste. <laughs> I'm just doing him a favour. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, uh, but, you know, at the same time, I am a kid. <laughs> Where's my bullet? Oh, you don't want? Oh, I don't lovely, want. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Also, real quick, also, also, five of them said that out of the group, I make the worst tea. I've only made tea for four of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you never offered the other one. Uh, and I'm not going to now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Katie, we'll have your one for now. I'm looking forward to see what, you're, uh, what you've prepared for, for this. <laughs> um, okay. I, I've gone for the relatively low bar of my landlord. Or okay. not necessarily my... The people who let the house they or the landlord, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So it came okay. with a car parking space, which has got a big bollard in it, which you can move if you have a key. We never got given the key, and they were like, that's because it's not your car parking space. And I was like, it clearly has our address spray-painted onto the whole car parking space <laughs> in letters as tall as I am. So it is. We've been back and forth, and they said, oh no, we've got a key. We'll send it to you. And we have this <laughs> it's a photocopy of the key <laughs> so this, unsurprisingly hasn't opened the bollard <laughs> <laughs> we got them to deliver it in person today because we were having an inspection <laughs> we're just like yeah we'll send it you <laughs> and then this just arrived and they were like oh beforehand we need to get you to sign it I'm trying to cover all of the important details <laughs> It's fine. The, the the quality isn't good enough that we can read that. To see yeah, that. don't. You're fine. I mean, oh, I'm so starved of you know people. Come over. I'm, half, I'm very <laughs> close to doxing myself. I'm not, I'm not legal now. Um, Wonderful. We, we just yeah. like they've been insisted for six months that we don't have a car parking space, which is our address written on it, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah. we do have a key." Here's a picture of it. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, your time finished a while ago, but I wanted to let you finish. Oh. <laughs> That's all when good. I hear stuff like this, I want to join ISIS. <laughs> they have the right. Why are they really it's good difficult. landlords? I was going to say, <laughs> have ISIS not have landlords? Association. No, they're really socialist. The thing about conservative Muslims is that genuinely, as terrible as they are, like when when I'm talking about Islamists, as terrible as they are. They're actually really socialist and believe in like redistribution and don't believe in capitalism, which, you know, when I hear stuff like what Katie's going through, I'm like, fuck it, I'm a join. <laughs> right. And can I just say, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so K Katie is basically responsible for radicalizing a whole new generation to. Uh, <laughs> They're a state agent. They're a state agent is responsible. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, to be fair, <laughs> if ISIS did make it their marketing campaign, you don't have to deal with landlords. That's like every millennial, like, yes, mate. You know what? Count and me they'd, in. And they'd still be better than my second year student let an agency. Oh, God, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Student landlords are the I only thing worse than landlords. Oh, I have stories. Yeah.
you say this, but like I have a lot of friends of mine who are like, you know, Muslims who sort of grown up at least with, you know, reference or like they're in the space of conservative Islamism. And you got to bear in mind, particularly at a time like now, a lot of these kids are just sat at home, bored as shit, no purpose, no direction. And they're like, I'm going to work in an office or like a car phone warehouse or like a call center all my life. And I'm still not going to afford a home. And then ISIS are like, we will provide you a home, no letting agents, no landlords, and you get a job and it's kind of cool. You'll be on the front pages of the papers. <laughs> Raul, you can stop. I was sold like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, the if, idea if... that ISIS would have like a, a recruiting agent at trans LGBT plus comedy nights, that is that would be amazing. That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wasn't paying attention properly. Is ISIS Raul's dickhead of the month then? No, yeah. no, we've not even started that yet. Uh... No, the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. I think I'm gonna give the points to Pope for that one. Um, yeah, and I think uh, right up, I'm gonna give Katie a point just because I really enjoyed uh, all, all the stuff I learned about horseshoe crabs. Uh, that was <laughs> yeah, that was uh, really intense. And um, yeah, I I'm morally conflicted now. I can see why you went for it, but um, but yeah, I'm gonna give the points to Pope because Pope didn't overrun by about three minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, I think that's. Fair. I was like, I'm just going to keep on going until I get told to stop, and then you didn't. So I was, <laughs> yeah. And also, I don't think Pope had illustrations. All right. No, that, no that's true. Yeah. That's true. And Pope did not have the foresight to write it both backwards and forwards, which is a very yeah. difficult thing to do. Probably. Do you know? I, yeah. I, I did have illustrations. I just didn't want to show them. I just oh, well, didn't want to show them. Well, maybe private. that was your. Well, maybe that's your mistake, Pope, and not ours. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> You're so slimy every time you don't get a point, mate. Like, <laughs> it's all a character. Funny says. It's the I'll be like, None I'll of be. us beg as much as you. No, before, before <laughs> I've we already on. filled in the Excel cells. I'm not changing them now. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff. Uh, Kirsty's team is in the lead with 10 points, but Tom, Tom's team is approaching with eight, so uh, still everything to play for in the last two rounds. We're going to have. Uh, I see what you've done there. The you've completely added jeopardy on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> well as someone who's played this game before, all the points are in the last round. Okay, don't worry yeah, about yeah. it. Like, we, like, like genuinely, yeah, Tom was up. 10 points behind and still won a couple of episodes ago. Because, points. like, he got the people who do the one-liners. So, yeah, like... I am not your girl. <laughs> okay, well, don't tell me that now. <laughs> tell me that right Tell now. me that when Johnny's picked a team so I can complain in the chat. <laughs> I can tell you right now that this is going to go very poorly for us. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Oh, that's that's. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's fair because I'm also bad at the last round. It's like the torch in the hair, <laughs> and we're gonna fuck you up with our shells. Can I tell my Harry Potter story. Yep, you can tell your Harry Potter story. Because like, because like, I've been thinking of this for a while, thinking eventually will make it into my stand up, and like now, like, basically, these are like my last chances to talk about this without having to like do a whole thing about like, look, I know Joe K. Rowling is shit. But I've got a funny story, so just fuck it up. So <laughs> yeah, get it's out now. a new cycle, so I'm claiming it's relevant. So I used to be on the committee for a Quidditch and Harry Potter society in my university. I'm not surprised. And the Quidditch side and the Harry Potter side split from each other because the Quidditch side felt that being associated with Harry Potter was holding Quidditch back from being recognised as a serious sport. <laughs> oh, That's <man>. amazing. <laughs> I missed hell. the beginning of that, but like, I don't think I needed to hear it to I know. I feel you get the context. Yeah, there, there is like nothing you could put before the begin before the end of that sentence for it to be reasonable. <laughs> It took like two years and like everyone was taking it so fucking seriously. And I was just the treasurer, so I was just like, I want to make sure we have some money to buy like brooms and shit. <laughs> like, and so how how does how does how how does the Quidditch society work? Like what 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 how does Muggle Quidditch work? Oh, god. oh my god. So basically it's a combination of full contact rugby, dodgeball, netball. Um, tag, um, 
and you're like running around with a broom between your legs the whole time. So Amazing. it's fucking carnage. Like we we used to have to like pay for ambulances to be at all of the tournaments because it wasn't a question of if someone gets seriously injured, it was a question of when. That sounds really terrifying. This story just reminds me of how much of an asshole I was in university because I definitely would have made fun of you relentlessly. For playing Quidditch. To be fair, I would have simultaneously been the person that made fun of you and also like joined the team. <laughs> real, real quick, um, just still on the uh, like, the, just in regards to my fantasy football league. <laughs> No, 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 no. no. <laughs> bonus <laughs> content. Bonus no, this is, content. No, this isn't. This isn't about them. This isn't about the run. This is just something that I have in my room that I can like. So every year, the winner gets an actual bona fide trophy with their name engraved on it. But we also have a trophy for last place as well. Oh, uh, no. Now. Uh, I, I didn't come last this year. I came last last year, but I obviously haven't been able to hand the last place trophy over to people. If you guys want to see the last place trophy, I have it for you right here. It, oh, was, proudly, it was proudly hanging up in my house. I, I wonder how many people were watching the stream when Ombi mentioned uh, um, so football this, and went, oh, and then so, when so the keep in, keep in mind, went, oh. the, first, the first place <laughs> trophy is a, is a genuine statue with a, a, a names and, and engravings and, and it's all very nice. This is the last place trophy. Uh, it's a toilet seat. <laughs> It's a, to uh, it's a toilet seat with a, a <laughs> shitty plaque that, by the way, uh, my friend who went to get this made, like he, he took the, he's like, hi, we want this to say uh, this on the plaque. Can you uh, just, can you just fuck up the plaque? Can you just like really make a fucking dog's dinner of it? And the guy said it was the, <laughs> um, the best request he's ever got. Still charged full price for it though. Um, Amazing. Uh, uh, my name is spelt wrong. Uh, oh, I've got, <laughs> me winter. <laughs> um, and one of what I like, so this is called the Hugh Jackson Award, named after one of the worst coaches in NFL history. Uh, and to solidify, right. uh, here he is. Uh, here he is on the on the reverse of the toilet seat. Oh uh, my god, amazing! Uh, and and also it's so shitty that um, it it I opened it up there and it fell apart. So <laughs> amazing! One of those really cheap plastic ones as well. I can tell you. Oh. Yeah. I, I was as soon as I, I I've been expressly forbidden from using it as an actual toilet seat. <laughs> Oh god, yeah. It's it's one of those ones that like will always stick to your butt whenever you try and stand up. I can just tell them by looking at it. So yeah, I'm supposed to hand this over to the first person to ever win it twice, uh, and uh, I can't. I, I'll have to send it, I guess, via the post. Just <laughs> send it via post. I like, <laughs> uh, love it. Take it into the post office without wrapping it. Just ask, get them to do it. And I'll and, uh, and I'll send I'll send along a little bullet as well, being <laughs> like here. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently trying to Edward Rowe of teenage Tim Farron, the Fucking former young leader, had a poster of Thatcher on his wall. Yeah, that, that really doesn't surprise me. Oh. Uh, why? Like, just ew. That is pretty disgusting, yeah. Like, there I don't think there's a single political leader that I give enough of a shit about to put a poster on my wall. I mean, that was Barack Obama's whole thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. but in America, yeah. like he was effectively a rock star compared to all the like yeah. rotting old white corpses they yeah. had up until then. Yeah, so like, Barack uh, Obama was the up, was the putty DIY band running through the massive. <laughs> right, yeah. compared to like hey, oh, Bill Clinton, I yeah. play a saxophone whoa, and whoa, rape Bill interns. Clinton, mm. Well, that, that was bad, but Bill Clinton <laughs> on the sax was sexy. I got it. <laughs> Before I knew about oh wait non sin re they say they love you hold on I'll unplug this I oh. just want to say I would happily if Bernie was a world leader I would happily buy it <laughs> okay okay here's here's the thing right young right. Bernie is a fucking no smoke show on this yet so hmm? you do that I'm gonna make I said I said young Bernie is a smoke show <laughs> is he fit you mean have yeah, yeah. have you seen young Bernie. I, yeah, 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 I was just making sure that that was what you meant. And yeah, cool, cool, I mean, I'm, cool. I'm dating Tom, like, you know, <laughs> you with glasses, like, of course I find him hot. Cool, okay, like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I was going to say, like, I get oh. why, like, Joe Biden's popular now, That's because, like, young Joe Biden was, like, all-American, like, football star. I get, like, mm. I get young Joe Biden theoretically, but he's not mm. my type. Mm. Um, But, like... I understand. I understand, young Bernie. <laughs> yeah, of uh, course we understand. Ed, Ed, Ed Rofer said he has Corbyn posters. They were a birthday present, though so he didn't actually buy them. But um... okay, that's that's fair. I get Corbyn posters, but not 
not because he's sexy. <laughs> like, does that make know. sense? I don't know. He has daddy energy, though. Do oh, you... who the fuck has daddy energy? Let me in on this conversation. Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn. Corbyn. <laughs> oh, fuck yes. Yeah. Daddy Corbs. Yes. Yeah, Daddy Corbs. Oh, exactly. Jam with me. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna shit on anyone's like daddy vibes. <laughs> but he's like, he's like skinny daddy. Yeah, he's yeah. Not, like a bear enough for me, but like mm. he does feel like he'd have that whole like caretaking, but like mm. would tell you calmly in control all the things you should be doing to take care of yourself thing. Mm. He would uh, make sure you were okay. I re- yeah, Jeremy Corbyn's like, he's good at after you a biscuit and then just sit you down and be like, mm. right, we're going to sort your life out. And I'm just like, mm. yeah. and then he would uh, sort your life out. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was gonna say like now I I feel like you're like really really putting into context why like Jeremy Corbyn is just doing it for me like politically yes but like when you're all like oh yeah young Jeremy Corbyn because he would sort your life out and I'm like not young Jeremy Corbyn like, <laughs> sorry I thought we were I'm... here for Daddy Corbs I okay we were here for that. I'm just I'm just saying you know I don't think it's a coincidence that the team that's winning is the team with the two straight see white men on it I'm not straight. <laughs> Could you just throw me fucking straight? <laughs> you little cunt! What the fuck? Well, no, Ash called... No, I do not! Walk around life to be mistaken for a fucking straight person. <laughs> I was actually talking about Sean. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so just because you're, so, just cause you're so butch, Tom. That's what it is. I am butch, aren't I? <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you got it out, Tom, because that, that seemed like that had been building for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I work in a Catholic school. I'm getting sick of it. <laughs> it's the cardigan. The next round is the great debate. Uh, this is a question time format. Panelists will debate a topic that's been in the news while taking the roles of assigned characters by the host. Uh, I have sent them all over to you, but I'm going to read them out anyway so everyone knows. Um, so the the topic of discussion today is whether or not we should be taking down statues of people who um, who no longer reflect the nation's... Whether we should take down statues of racists. Um, <laughs> uh, we have on our panel today, we have Kirsty, who is playing Wreck-It Ralph. Ah! We have, uh, Tom, who is playing a 5G conspiracy theorist. We have Quinby, who is a professional human statue. We have David Stanier, who is an open mic comedian who says it like it is and doesn't care about offending the libs. <laughs> we have uh, Erica, a hippie who doesn't see colour. And Khalid, who is Nigel Farage. Um, right, uh, let's get this started. Kirstie, so, first... are you... Are you... Sorry, Kirsty, are you wearing dungarees just to be in character for Wreck-It Ralph? Yes, I am. <laughs> the, the, the one other time I've worn these dungarees was when I went as Wreck-It Ralph to a fancy dress party. <laughs> Oh, that's, so that's why I have them. <laughs> and Johnny didn't know that. No, no it just in, in my head, I was like, you could play a good Wreck It Ralph. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> this, this will be an interactive game as well, by the way. So if you want to put any questions towards any of the panelists during this bit, please feel free to put them in the comments and I will forward them on. Um, so, yes. Uh, shall we be taking down uh, racist statues as part of protests? Let's start with Khaled. What are your views on this? Um, first of all, I'd appreciate it if you didn't um, use that Muslim name to describe me. <laughs> Sorry, nice name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think we should build more racist statues. I think they should be holding fish and chips and a pint of ale. <laughs> and I'd ask you this, I'd ask you this. Is it racist to be proud to be British? Is it racist to have concerns about immigration? Is it racist to own slaves? No, I would say no. So, uh, do you own slaves, Nigel? Who told you that? (laughs) I'm I'm just asking. This is not a trick question. No. You don't own slaves. Okay, right. Uh, Well, moving Uh, on. So, uh, the topic this month is whether face coverings should be mandatory in supermarkets. Uh, the panel we've got today, we've got Kirsty Summers, who is a WHO, um, a WHO spokesperson, World Health Organization. I forgot what it stood for for a second. Uh, <laughs> Kirsty, uh, are you dressed as Doctor Who? No. <laughs> <laughs> but now that you say it, I can see why you think kind that. Of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely Very works. Uh, Charlie is an anti-vaxxer. Bobby is a mask, uh, which is the, the whole mask gag. That wouldn't have made sense if you didn't know that. 
It's um, not a gag. I, I can still talk. It's not a gag. Don't worry. <laughs> I haven't got, got in my sex box. <laughs> Uh, we've got uh, we've got Raoul, who is a Russian spy. Uh, Tom, who is the CEO of Antifa, and Andrew, who is coronavirus. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, now, Bobby. How do you feel about being mandatory to wear in supermarkets? I completely agree with the who person. I was <laughs> specifically designed to sit on your face, <laughs> and if you're a grown adult, you'll find a way to fucking breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I love a bit of shopping. I love shopping. <laughs> Take me out. I'm going to just address myself. Don't mind me. <laughs> I can't see now. <laughs> we are going to be discussing the A-level algorithm system and whether that's fair. Uh, we have Kirsty, who is taking the role of an A-level drama student. We have Keris, who is the head of Eton. Uh, Aaron, who is an Ofsted inspector. Eddie, who is Education Secretary Gavin Williamson. Tom, who is an exam invigilator, and Dean, who is an over-enthusiastic English teacher. So, um, we're, I think we're ready to go. So, yeah. Um, uh, fuck. So, uh, yeah, start off with, it, do you think it is fair to grade A-levels based on an algorithm uh, instead of exams? Let's start with uh, Education Secretary Gavin Williamson. Yes, I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like messing up kids. <laughs> I'm so glad my team just got the point. <laughs> Can I just oh, say... my broomstick! <laughs> yeah. Can I just say, that impression was outstanding. It was. <laughs> that, that's the grade you got for that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Justin Williamson. <laughs> Thank you for your input. How did you make your head a dream stream? I don't know. <laughs> I did it the test before we started to like the show, and it really worked. <laughs> I do like that your bow tie was like right underneath yeah. his throat the whole time. <laughs> so he looks just like he should be from Eton. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Horrible. Oh, round off. We don't need to. Horrible little goblin. <laughs> <Just ended there>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Education Secretary Gavin Williamson, <laughs> for, your, for your insightful input onto the question. Uh, so we've got Erin, uh, who is playing the economy. Jake is playing a retired boomer. Katie is playing Boris Johnson. I'm so sorry, Katie. Uh, Kirsty <laughs> is playing an anarchist. Pope is a posh teenager with a rich dad, and Tom is an undefined small business owner. I just realised the um, the way my YouTube thing set out the um, the Blizzard Comedy Watermark covers owner, so it just says Tom is an undefined small business. <laughs> which, I mean, <laughs> do that if you want. I'm I'm happy with that. Uh, right. So yeah, today we're going to be just- the term is sole trader. Uh, <laughs> the the term is comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Alleged comedian, <laughs> right? So, uh, so called career. <laughs> uh, Tom, uh, what are your views on uh, extending the furlough? Well, first of all, I would like to point out that there is a typo in this. It says undefined. It should actually say underfunded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, then, therefore, my answer is yes. My answer is, of course, yes. The furlough stream should abso- absolutely be extended. One. Keep it short. Do read. Oh, why? Why is a thing that? I have to get? <laughs> right. Yeah. Of course it is. Um, or the, the new, the new Steam shit. I mean, like, like all freelance, like all freelance, like all self-employed people. I actually have seven different jobs, and I'll probably list them all off during this for different jokes. Um, <laughs> but, but first of all, like, we, um, like, it is. You're only eligible for the new Steam if you are part of a viable business. Now, I own a all year round Halloween store. Now, how is, and this only goes up to October. So after October, how is this not a viable business? I personally don't understand. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, what, what the government should be doing uh, in order to ensure that children don't starve, whether it is right that the that, uh, government do provide aid for children during the school holidays uh, in a time of national crisis. So we're going to start with, uh, so uh, we're going to start with you, Jamie. Um, so what do you think about, about this entire situation? What do you think we should be doing to help uh, the kids not starve. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> Why would you want to help the kids not starve? Yeah, they, they, well, they just need to get a job. 
Does she need to get a job? Um, okay. 3.15. <laughs> when do I start being Boris Johnson, by the way? <laughs> uh, in, 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 in your own time. <laughs> right, okay. So you think that um, kids should just be getting jobs during the school holidays so they can continue to eat? Is that, is that, is that what you're saying? My nanny had a paper round. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's um, probably true as well isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah that's that's fair um just, are, are you aware of the state of the job market right now in the middle of a global pandemic just... you'll have to speak to my mate rishi about that i'm not a hundred percent sure aren't we doing <laughs> something like giving them like 50 percent if they ask nicely and they're from the south <laughs> I, think I can't quite remember Wonderful. Yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have got Dominic Cummings or Rishi Sunak on the show. But uh, thank you for your contribution, Boris. Uh, let's move on to uh, Ryan now, Mr. Marcus Rashford. Uh, do you have any counterpoints to anything that uh, 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 the right uh, yeah. that prick was I, saying? <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a song, uh, but I can't sing, so forgive me. <laughs> That's fine. It's, it's more of a rap, and it gets quite hamilton me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. I'm Marcus F- Rashford. I'm taking down the government, bitch. I'm young, <laughs> probably and talented. I've come here to eat the rich. Boris can suck it, Matt Hancock, too, because I'm doing more for children than any one of you. You gave me an MBE, thought it was enough for me. Look, I ain't going down quietly because I'm Marcus Rashford. I'm taking down the government, bitch. I'm young from poverty and talented, and I've come here to eat the rich. I'm giving children food. You don't seem in the mood. Rude. You're misconstrued because you're the government, dude. I don't mean to start a feud, but I'm doing more for children. I do conclude. Bam. Done. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. That that is... Possibly the most effort anyone's put into this stupid game. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excuse me, I dressed up as Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> Did you rap? <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Oh. No, like weeks ago. <laughs> uh, so the topic of discussion is uh, specifically what should happen to a member of our panel uh, should he be impeached. So we'll start off uh, fairly uh, hearing what uh, Donald Trump has to say. So Donald Trump, do you think you should be impeached? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told any of you before. I do actually come from Clashley. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, you know what? I'm the best president going. Ask my mother. She, you know, I have a Wikipedia if my mother's alive. Um, who does that? Um, but you know what? Fantastic. I'm the dog's bollocks. Why would you get rid of me? A dog once pointed at his bollocks and went, you know what? That's you. Fantastic. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> All star to me, thank you. Bring on the ladies. Okay, so we've got uh, next round is a special Valentine's uh, edition of uh, the Great Debate. We're going to be doing Agony Aunt. So uh, each of our panelists is going to be assigned a different character, and we're going to be posing them some some questions from from some some uh, uh, romantically struggling Yahoo Answer posters. Uh, so uh, I'm quite looking forward to see how this is going to go. So we've got Kirsty, who is playing Jackie Weaver from the. Uh, on the, that Paris Zoom call I've forgotten the uh, name of now. Tom <laughs> is going to be playing uh, our, our, our beloved Labour leader, Keir Starmer. Not the way I'm playing. Uh, Umbi, <laughs> is, being, uh, Umbi is, is being typecast as the as the non-binary panellist, uh, is playing a robot. <laughs> oh, yes, the third gen. <laughs> uh, Sean is playing Dolly Parton. <laughs> and and uh, who else we've got? We've got, oh, Paddy McGuinness. Paddy McGuinness. Hey, I'm, Joey! I'm quite... Hello, Joey! Hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sean, put uh, Naomi on it. Is that what you're asking me? Is that asking me? Don't put Naomi on it. Conducive to a productive discussion. Can you please just answer the question so we can get on with some proper work, please? Does Sean Naomi on it? Simple answer, of course. Does my favourite chocolate double decker because you can have four on the bottom and on the top. Do you get that? On the bottom and on the top. Do you get that? You can have four on the bottom and on the top. I'll explain it one more time. You can have four on the bottom. And on the top, you point, thank you. She's talking, Jack. Tell Jackie to show up. She's talking on the top, on the top, and Can on the bottom. Him, please, because we need to get on. We've got important work to do. Right? It's about parish sex. Really it's about important. sex. <laughs> was an important parish council work to do. Can we please calm him down. Beep, boop, we'll put beep, him in the waiting boop. room. He's clearly not here to have a constructive conversation. When he is, he can be I, I just think anybody should be able to say whatever they want. Oh, you give them the vote, they just start gobbing off, don't they now? Hey! 
Uh, this month, we are going to be debating the uh, police crime sentencing and courts bill, uh, the, the, the bill that has sparked controversy for um, essentially making uh, protesting illegal or or causing an annoyance as part of a protest illegal. Right, okay, let's, let's let's move on to to someone who's a bit more on on the front lines with this now. Uh, Raul, uh, what 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 do you think about this this uh, proposed bill? And uh, do you think that protesting should be better regulated or policed? Or what what, what do you think about this whole thing? Okay, well, on that note, let's 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 move, let's move over to to Master Pretty. Um, how, how how are you feeling about about this 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 bill? Of course, we're not going to pretend there aren't problems on both sides. Um, but when people get violent, we can't have that treated as a meaningful way of voicing your opinions. It's childish. The solution to the problems on both sides is for my side to be granted the state-sanctioned right to brutalise whomever they please <laughs> and for the rest of you to shut the fuck up and do as you're told. <laughs> uh, Erica, what are your views on, on the, the uh, illegal taking down of statues? Well, like, I think that we should just let the Earth do what it <laughs> wants, you know? Because, like, it's just there. And, you know, it's not really, like... I don't think it's like really hurting anyone, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's just a you know, just there. And as long as the statue's not like I don't know, eating animals, like what's the problem? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it I don't see the issue. It's not like it's like hurting the animals cuz like <laughs> like that's all I care about, you know. It's like, what, what's the pro? I don't get it. <laughs> I've just got the image of a statue of Winston Churchill eating your horse. <laughs> does like also does racism exist anymore? Because like, uh, like does it? I don't. Because the way I see it, we're all the same. We're all one race the human race you know what i mean like <laughs> come on people <laughs> like very eloquently <laughs> argued thank you <laughs> uh thank you erica we'll we'll, uh, we'll get back to you shortly i'm sure <laughs> uh, let's let's move this on uh, to tom uh, what what are your views on on whether we should be taking down statues uh, of uh, people who maybe don't necessarily reflect british values anymore in just this me, manner just give me two seconds erica broke me a little bit <laughs> Uh, Tom, Tom, uh, what, what are your views on the mandatory wearing of masks in supermarkets? Well, I originally wasn't going to answer any questions because the CEO of Antifa isn't actually a thing, but I realised that that wouldn't be in the spirit of the game. So, um, <laughs> but Tom, contrary, you are the CEO contrary of Antifa. To Am I though? Contrary to popular <laughs> belief, Antifa actually stands for anti fascists, not anti face mask. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, we would then just know ourselves as anti facma. Um, <laughs> and in so, and face masks are not fascists, so therefore we are anti anti facma. Um, because in <laughs> fact, by not wearing a mask, you are actively killing other people against their will and practice and when you're using that argument which is um oh well it's survived with the fittest that is uh, what i like to call watered down eugenics hmm. so um so therefore that is actually fascist so not wearing a mask is fascist so anti fatma are in fact mass so anti far is anti fatma beautifully put tom thank you very I know, much right spit in words <laughs> <laughs> Oh, as a mask, I'll have you know that spitting is strictly prohibited. I mean, I mean, it's all right if you do it within the mask. Just don't do it in people's mouths. No, don't, don't, don't spit on me, please. <laughs> I'm but a humble mask. <laughs> <laughs> so make make sure you put Bobby on your face, but don't use any spit. Um... <laughs> I love how this turned into a let's objectify Bobby session. <laughs> uh, you're the one who, t Bobby, you're the one who turned it into face sitting, not us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Look, thank you, I've only done it once and it didn't go very well. So, you know, but I, however, I have worn a mask more than once and that went very well. 
uh, yeah. can oh. I recommend if if it's not working for you, like you might be doing it wrong. The person wearing you might be doing it wrong. Like try someone you fit better. You'll have better success. <laughs> yeah, you've got to make sure that Bobby covers your entire nose and mouth. Just like, this is an oh, essential oh, protective <laughs> me measure. Get Bobby right underneath your chin, right up to the nose. <laughs> Fuck this. Fuck <laughs> uh, let's go over to Jake now. Jake, what are your views on the extension of furlough or lack thereof? Well, I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't understand why these younger workers can't just get jobs in industries that are exempt from the virus. You know, like professional tennis player or home ownership. <laughs> I didn't work 50 years as a part-time printing press assistant, just to have all of my hard-earned pension spent on taxes to sustain my own children. <laughs> How many children? Fellow Sheem should not have existed in the first place. People are lazy. <laughs> well, that's that's a really interesting take. You think fellow shouldn't have existed in the first place? Um, uh, 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 Pope, what, what are your views on this? Should the furlough scheme have existed in the first place? And uh, do you think it should be extended now? I can't wait for this. Uh, furlough scheme, you say? What's, uh, what's cousin furlough done now? Uh, is he, is he <laughs> cousin furlough? Good man. I uh, think that's one of mine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think we've got a cousin in common. Uh, has he finally approved the extrajudicial killing of single mums? <laughs> <laughs> We all said making it Secretary of Defence was asking for trouble, but you know that's cousin furlough for you. Um, I mean, I, I don't know why people are so worried about jobs anyway. My dad bought the BBC, uh, and he made sure all the comedy panel shows saved the space for me, so I could go on and talk about all the naughty sex things that I've been up to. And uh, you know, if you're struggling during the pandemic, just do what a normal person would do: ask Daddy to buy a public service broadcaster. It's so easy. And, you know, <laughs> also Cousin Furlough is thinking of starting his own news channel for those <laughs> who feel undeserved and unheard by the media. So uh, uh, white people, it'll be, it'll be a channel full of white people, white people like the Devonshire clotted cream that dribbles out of me when I orgasm. So uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that's, yeah, so C Cousin Furlough is up to all kinds of nonsense and he should carry on. He should carry on since he's, uh, he's a good fellow. <laughs> this way, I, I'm an undefined small business, but I feel very much like your father is an undefined large business right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what um, any of that is. <laughs> at that, yeah, Daddy, Daddy's got a big portfolio. He owns uh, half of uh, Ukraine, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's uh, he's he, he's he's all over the shop, to be honest. But uh, that's Daddy. <laughs> for you. My portfolio is just pencil drawings of horses. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few more people on as well. Uh, so uh, let's move on to uh, Mr. Colkin now. Now, what, it, uh, what what are your views on on uh, what what should happen to pre to uh, former President Trump now? Should he I... be impeached or should he be otherwise punished? I just think we've got to be careful because we don't know what uh, Trump is capable of. When I met him on the um, on the set of Home Alone Two, he actually took me aside and said, "Listen, kid." How do I jerry rig the White House with paint cans to keep out them libs? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we found where he hid that. It was in the Winston Churchill bus we chucked in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find the nails in the stairs? I'll keep an eye out. I'm wearing, <laughs> I have heard about them though, so I'm wearing very big shoes. <laughs> like what goths wear. <laughs> Oh, I'd love to see Joe Biden in like proper Doc Martens. That'd be great. Yeah, just that was <laughs> demonious, mate. Proper. Oh, like, demonious. All, all the right, way up. all right. Springs in. All right, all right. Fucking flashing your money. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who cares that I bought a Rolex? I'm into goth shoes now. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> uh, let's start with Dolly this time. Why are men afraid of commitment? Well, Jolene? Can I call you Jolene? You can call me Jolene, that's fine. Jolene? Jolene. Jolene? Jolene? <laughs> I'm begging you. Please don't take my man. <laughs> and that's why men are afraid of commitment. Because of that um, bitch Jolene. Because of Jolene. It's all Jolene's fault. That's what we need to 
I'm so happy I'm on this show tonight <laughs> for this. <laughs> uh, okay, this uh, is I what mean... it's come, Sean. This is what it's come to, Sean. This is what it's come to. I, I heard that. I, I heard that Jolene still had your paint stick. <laughs> Uh, and Keir Starmer, why are men afraid of commitment? I'm looking forward to this one. It's not right, right. It's not that men fear commitment. It's never that men fear commitment. It's just that men, like myself, believe that true happiness lies equidistant from commitment and genocide. <laughs> I feel that Tom really has to work for his jokes and I just get to do northern voice. Like... <laughs> I'm getting the easiest gags here, and like Tom's putting craftsmanship into it. I'm just like, hey! <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, thank thanks. you, though. I appreciate it. So, uh, Red, I understand you uh, take part in quite a lot of environmental protests. Uh, how, how are you feeling about this, the possible introduction to this bill? Does it make you nervous? How, how are you feeling? Uh, well, well, I don't think that uh, people should face prison for causing an annoyance. Look, I, I don't even think I should be asked to leave the dinner table. For causing an annoyance. Oh, I don't care if I do chew loudly. Oh, I didn't. I didn't choose for you to be my stepdad, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Reasonable point. Um. Now. Um. Ian is a protester for a rather, rather different cause. How are you feeling about this whole this whole situation? Well, if you think about it, like the road is kind of like the city's face. And <laughs> if a lot of people congregate on it at the same time, then that kind of constitutes a mask. So I'm kind of in favour of the bill because it would stop protests from covering the mask of the city. Having said that, <laughs> it would stop me from being able to protest about the oppressive regime of trying to put face bras on everyone, but <laughs> it's a price I'm willing to pay for the larger face of humanity. <laughs> David, what are your views on, on, on the statues? Uh, just to preface this, uh, as it says on my Facebook profile, works at stand-up comedian, so I am a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I say might be a joke, <laughs> so all statues are bloody shit anyway <laughs> when was the last time you went oh man yes i like statues never so just get rid of them all starting with the statue of liberty yeah or oh, give me your weak and needy have some self-respect you big stone sluts <laughs> I don't know where I expected that character to go, but it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> right, moving away from Bobby for a second. Uh, Raoul, have, uh, have you got any comments on the mandatory mask wearing situation? Um, shan't need to get my accent right. Uh, <laughs> first, firstly, oh, I don't know why I've got a list. Hang on. Uh, firstly, I would like to say, uh, coming from a country that uh, values... Uh, the heteronormative monogamous household that you guys are discussing is sitting on each other's faces. The spitting is fucking disgusting. Uh, <laughs> but I, I would expect no less from this secret Antifa gathering that I am addressing here. So to all you rainbow-haired terrorists in attendance, uh, you in attendance who are violently liberal, uh, I would that like to true. say, firstly, there is no more important thing, no more important thing than freedom of speech. We know this here in Mother Russia. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why my points of information regarding the face mask will be seven hours long. <laughs> I expect you to pay full attention, otherwise you don't respect democracy or freedom of speech. Secondly, <laughs> I would like to say I'm meant to be a Russian spy, but uh, I don't know why I sound like I managed Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> uh, well, half like a the manager of Tottenham Hotspur, and half like a meerkat selling car insurance. Uh, <laughs> with masks, I think it's important uh, to note uh, who you identify as, who you, how you form your political opinion. So if you're 
uh, anarcho conspiracist without political belief, then remember this is a government conspiracy to get you to obey. Don't wear a mask, maybe blow some shit up to or something. If you're far to center left, remember, like you have always believed, the power is in the collective and individuals who choose not to wear a mask are the enemy and must be killed. Uh, and if you're moderately right wing, remember the left wing will literally kill you now if you don't <laughs> wear your mask. So don't wear it on principle and kill all the people you see wearing a mask before they kill you. <laughs> also, you mask, right. wearing, mask wearing makes you a lesbian. All of these people have been talking about one woman sitting on their face. So <laughs> Charlie, don't threaten us with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, I didn't say it was enjoyable, okay? But, like, sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. I'm talking about wearing a face mask, okay? Um, Official Who guidelines do you say lesbianism is fine as long as you are appropriately social distancing? So you've got to have a one metre long dildo. That's the only way you can do it. Um, so they do those. Yeah, they do. Know. They do. Yeah. Uh, just, 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 There's just, a list uh, of where you can just... get them on the Who website now. Uh, just, uh, Andy, oh, hang on. Uh, <laughs> Tom, Tom, uh, hold that thought. I just, um, uh, um, uh, I think we cut Raul off a, a bit now. I, I, I wanted to see how that bit was going to end. So, uh, Raul, do you want to finish? Do you want to finish that bit first? It's kind of fucked now that there's been like an interruption. If I must. Yeah. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> I could try and end it, but it's never gonna. It's never gonna quite. I mean, do you want to go for it? It's never gonna quite match for it. But if you can all pretend to laugh and be like, ah, yeah, smart. yeah, I'm, I'm very good at pretending to laugh. I've, okay. I, 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 I have worked with Tom B before. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, unnecessary. Right, sure, <laughs> if you're far right, this is a multicultural conspiracy by the Jews to force all working class white men into the indignity of wearing a burqa. Shout out to Wiley. Also blow some shit up, uh, not in a Muslim way. Uh, if you are a mask yourself, the so-called British civilized people, they did this exact same thing to ethnic minorities once upon a time. They want you to aid them. They want you to use you. They want to use you without your consent, like a slave, like an animal. So I recommend, Bobby, you suffocate them. Suffocate them all, all of these <laughs> bastards. <laughs> the most important thing for us is that uh, Harry Kane stays with us, and next season we back, get back to the Champions League. Where we <laughs> <laughs> Nobody mentions that the report that literally came out uh, that said we uh, fucked up Brexit. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much, Raoul. Uh, Keris, I understand that your students have uh, done exceedingly well this year as a result of the algorithm. How do you feel about this? You must be very proud. Uh, it's actually Simon Henderson. Sorry, Simon Henderson. I didn't do my research. Uh, that was very <laughs> rude of me. It's all right. I looked at the Wikipedia page. Uh, I'm <laughs> Henderson. But have been despite myself only studying at Winchester College, so it's a wonder they let me in. It's actually been it's been a pretty emotional roller coaster for me because at the beginning, obviously, none of my students were affected as you might expect. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, but then, and really, what you should all be saying to me right now is is thank you so much. And what I have to say to you is you're welcome um, because we had one class of A level students who were studying a course that was their first time on this new syllabus. Uh, it was a new course about um, how to, to run the country um, by privatizing everything. And we'd never studied the course before. Um, and because we'd never studied the course before, what the A-level algorithm did is it judged my students as if they were part of the general population, um, which is obviously ridiculous. So they all received much lower grades than we were anticipating. So um, obviously before I didn't give a shit, but when my students were being affected, I wrote a letter. And because I wrote a letter, the government changed the algorithm decision. Um, and so it's actually down to me uh, and my activism that students were receiving the grades that their teachers rightly or wrongly obviously our teachers rightly your teachers wrongly thought that they deserved so <laughs> you're welcome well thank you very much i have already forgotten your name simon was it, is it, even, is it, is it even simon or michael that's i can't michael simon that's your name now uh, you know what, i'm honestly you. just surprised it's not rupert <laughs> <laughs> so uh rose was actually one of the rioters uh at the capitol um when uh all this was going down so uh you sort of experienced well you were part of uh what is potentially getting uh the former president impeached what well, do you have anything to add add to to this discussion do you think it's fair well, that first of all i object to the phrase rioter i think that's inaccurate i was just having a lovely day out in washington dc with my friends brogan Chadley and QAnon fan 69. 
<laughs> we were just having a lovely time sightseeing and you know we we got caught up in you know watching what was going on and it was just a big crowd and we ended up kind of being hustled in because you know it's difficult to fight that amount of people even though I was trying extremely hard to fight that amount of people <laughs> and you know I've, I you know I was quite nervous so I had sweaty hands and you know I, I'm very health and safety conscious as well so I was just inspecting the fire extinguisher you know just making sure it was working and because of my aforementioned sweaty hands it fell out of my hands unfortunately into a window um which then <laughs> which then unfortunately smashed on a police officer hashtag blue lives matter um so you know and then unfortunately i you know it, again the crowd was so strong i ended up getting getting whisked up onto the balcony because there were lots of people there that were sort of climbing on top of each other not in a gay way um <laughs> and you know I'm, I'm all man i'm all fully man and not insecure about anything um, and then unfortunately ended up getting arrested. Um, but you know, I'm just, I'm an innocent victim of all this, as is Trump, as you know, Trump is a family man. He is just a noble, honest Christian man. And if you don't agree with me, then come and fight me because I'm in your back garden. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna move on to someone now who, who, who makes their living capitalizing off of these protests. We've got uh, Katie joining us. Um, how, how, how are you feeling about, about, about this bill? And uh, how, how would this, um... <laughs> Uh, how 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 would this affect you? Well, we're out of stock at the moment, which is um, <laughs> where we are. But Good. one thing I do have to say is, voila! In the view of the humble Vaud Velian veteran, cast vicariously both as victim and villain by the vicissitudes of fate, this visage, no mere veneer of vanity, is a vestige of the vox populi now vacant, vanquished. However, this valorous visitation, you know, like the film. <laughs> the vaccination stands vilified as it vows to vanquish these venal and virulent vermin. Like in the film, Vanguard is <laughs> vouchsafing. I haven't read the comic book. <laughs> and voracious violation of violation. The only verdict is a vendant, a vendetta, like the film. Held together and votive, not vain, for the value and veracity of which I'm going to move my laptop because I can't see my second screen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> were you reading that? I thought, I thought you just knew vigilant that. Vigilant and virtuous. Verily, this, that's not a word. Vichoise? Of large <laughs> peers, most for boats. Let me simply add that it's my very good honour to meet you, and you may call me Katie Mitchell, someone who sells these funny masks. <laughs> Johnny, can I just can I just say I think it's really, really disingenuous of you to platform this person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't see the surrounding sections of her eyes, so we've no idea if she's a cyborg behind there. <laughs> And I just think, like, you should be more responsible with your platform. Right. Okay. So, so, so you have a problem with a cyborg and I've, I've, I've... weaving. It's yeah. Film. All right. Listen, that's the case. Take it off. <laughs> just the mask. No sniggering at the door. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, technology is wonderful. Way too <laughs> competitive to to really be able to credit how good their individual impressions were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were all really good. They're <laughs> fucking great. Yeah. Like, um, if you're the chief of police, I would beat the fuck out of all of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that means a lot. Honestly, that really goes to my heart. Oh, you would say that. <laughs> uh, so um, back onto the topic of uh, alternatives to statues then i think the ice ice sculpture is a very interesting way of doing it then there are a lot more kind of temporary and they'll be a lot more relevant and up to date nigel how would you feel about replacing statues with maybe more contemporary ice sculptures uh, and then celebrating really the the, the 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 diversity now of of all the the kind of big important public figures and cultural icons well i would obviously have concerns i mean you know where else there is ice the soviet union <laughs> So what, what, do we want to make some kind of communist dictatorship fueled by ice sculptures? Is that, what we're, is that what we're heading towards by cowing to the demands of these Black Lives Matter protesters? <laughs> is, that, is that where we're going, Johnny? Is that where you want to go? Is that a Britain that you want to see, Johnny? 
Uh, I mean, out of character, yeah. But uh, <laughs> for now, uh, I am impartial. Um, okay, yeah, no, you, 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 you make a fair point there, Erica. How would you feel? Ice, ice is communist. That's what I'm saying. Ice is communist. I mean, I think we can all agree that uh, abolishing ice is a good thing to do. Uh, 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 Andrew, what, what, what do you... Uh, think about the mandatory uh, face mask wearing in supermarkets. Oh, it's me, Corona that I am. <laughs> I'm here. I'm fucking here. I recommend <laughs> everyone stay everywhere. away from Andrew, please. <laughs> oh, do some of that spitting like a punk in the 70s. You know what? You should always be wearing them masks. No. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna. Well, you know where they're wearing them fucking masks. <laughs> the, uh, I'll tell you where they're wearing them masks in the dentist. I'm gonna go down that dentist and find the practice manager at that dentist. <laughs> and I'm gonna find them and I'm gonna say, Gene, you need to give Andrew Marsh an appointment. I'm going to say Mark, I'm going to say Roy, I'm going to say Senior Dentist Clive. And don't you be wearing a fucking mask when you do it and make sure you spit in his mouth because he should get coronavirus and everyone should get coronavirus. Everyone should have me. You know, I never imagined coronavirus as the child catcher, but to be honest, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> right, we, we've we've had a question in for Education Secretary Gavin Williamson. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Taylor says, if there's still a pandemic on come the next election, should we use an algorithm to decide who wins that too? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't bloody think so. Actually, I think I'll be very much against democracy, which uh, because um, if they do, if they do that, then the the media bias might not be able to help me out and. Um, <laughs> I might lose my safe seat, and quite frankly, I've got too much skin in the game as a career politician to risk it. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, compelling argument, Gavin. Thank you very much. Uh, th this whole uh, bill, a lot of people are concerned, would could completely quash uh, opposition to the government uh, on the streets entirely, and uh, that who knows where that could lead to. So I just wondered, um, do you feel... How, how do you feel about that? I'm aware I that's a complicated question. No, <laughs> I, it's not. And please do not patronise me like that. I, <laughs> um, I feel that protests are acceptable uh, the way I do them. <laughs> any, any further questions? No, no. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to give uh, Red a chance to respond to that. So how, how, how do you feel about... about... Uh, the gentleman claiming uh, that, that uh, only his protests are, are legitimate. Look, I, I just think, uh, good luck getting me off the streets. Mum can't even get me out of the house. <laughs> I don't need luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, not sure if that's I'm not sure if that's terrifying or sexy. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Could you make it quick, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely sexy. Um, Wemby says, I don't even know if this was part of this round, but it, it works. So Wemby said, apparently surgical tape over the top of the mask stops you from steaming up. So Bobby, how do you feel about being affixed to faces with surgical tape? I'm into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobby's, fi uh, Bobby's fine with it. I don't know if Kirsty has anything to add on, on the accuracy of that statement. That's um, completely fine. Um, it, it does help a little bit, but it has to be like right here underneath where the glasses are. If you got over the bridge of your nose, that also holds it in place to stop it slipping down because you do yeah, need to cover your mouth and nose at all times. And if you wear it on your chin, like that doesn't help. No. Um, it stops your glasses fogging up, but Andrew can get in your mouth then. And is that really what you want? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've okay. got one more thing to say. One more thing to say. Cardiff Mill, fallen to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, I would like to say, as the um, CEO of Antifa, that the surgical tape trick is recommended, but only if you write in Sharpie, Nazis are poo poo heads. Two <laughs> uh, uh, guidelines state this is also fine. <laughs> uh, just, just, just a slide right there. Um, uh, Andrew, what did you say the score was? Uh, 
Uh, uh, Raul, uh, how does this affect uh, your chances in the... <laughs> we uh, have a big investment in Fulham. <laughs> Um, you know what? Joe Biden would never have stopped them eating egg mayo sandwiches on buses. I stopped that. I oh, went <laughs> all this equality stuff. Oh, were you meant to concentrate on that? If there's I'm people big egg- into the egg industry. I'm going to give them, like, I care about American jobs, specifically those of egg-laying chickens. <laughs> and I am ambivalent about them unionising, and that's the best you're going to get. So... <laughs> I don't believe in chickens. They were put out there by big farmers. <laughs> we can't have people behaving like thugs. That's no way to voice your problems. And I mean, if if you're causing a nuisance, people aren't going to want to listen to you. And you know, that can be if you're making noise complaints or just saying things I don't want to hear. I don't care about your human rights. Please be quiet. Just keep it to yourself. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to hire more police and give them more weapons. Ms. Patel. Whatever it takes to shut you up. Ms. Patel, you could only say all that just now because you're not wearing a mask. <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's because I have the backing of like all of the billionaires because I'm letting through the tax laws uh, that let them stay billionaires. Uh, and they also own the press and I own the police. So I'm. Yeah, I'm but we can we can fine. only hear you because you're not wearing a mask. Ian, I will fucking murder you. I will murder you. <laughs> your entire fucking family. Yeah, well, good, good luck, good luck uh, defeating my brand of activism, which involves doing very little. <laughs> I'll fucking murder the planet as well. You shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> to be honest, I shouldn't have joined Extinction Rebellion. I already want to die. To be honest, <laughs> be honest, Chief of Police, you're murdering us already with your oppressive face covering regimes. And that's the fucking point. That's the fucking... I wish it suffocated you. I wish it suffocated you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Honestly, well... see, the rest of them have a bit of a fucking point. Like, we are destroying the planet too fucking quickly uh, because we prioritise economic growth over nature. Like, the fucking Guy Fawkes sales... I don't, they don't really have a point, but fucking, do you know what? Capitalism is capitalism. You, you little shit cunt, you just smoke too much fucking weed and have too much of an opinion. Nobody's ever fucking told you you're wrong, you little cunt. <laughs> they may have done, but I couldn't hear them because they were wearing a mask. <laughs> you just never ate arse for long enough, have you, you fucking virgin? <laughs> I fail to see how that's relevant. <laughs> I don't like it when mummy and daddy fight. <laughs> Oh, this is a governmental dynamic I didn't want to be aware of. Fuck. Um, um, Erica, what what would you replace the current statues with if they were taken down? Um, I think, like, I'd put up um, maybe just, like, like, a single wheatgrass, you know, just one. <laughs> Question for Tom here. Tom, are you anti-fur or anti-fart? Oh no! You should never be anti-fart. It's it's <laughs> healthy. It's, it's just healthy. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I'm not making fart jokes, but you um, know, trumping feels nice. So uh, Trump, I have an anti-fart. She smells terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the SARS virus, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, behind this mask, there is more than just flesh. Beneath this mask, there is an idea. An idea is a bulletproof. Don't listen to her. I fucking not. I've shot loads in my life. Idea <laughs> persists, though. Did anybody see the uh, Snyder Cut? I thought it was really good. It was just made up by some guy who won't go to the dentist. Uh, as as a spokesperson for the world health organization i can assure you we actually have 
many, many global experts who can tell you that's complete horseshit what you just said, Charlie. <laughs> Your fear of the mouth should not be everyone's fear of the mouth. <laughs> not fear of the mouth it's the germs that come out of it babe it's babe. ironic when you it's ironic when you say that when most anti-vaxxers fear god <laughs> no i fear i i fear the 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 latex gloves of the dentist i want his bare hand in my mouth that's really <laughs> what i'm looking for in fairness I know, I know I know exactly how you feel. I just want him to lean over, kiss me, and suck the tooth out himself. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I think. Are you <laughs> Andrew's dentist? Is that why he doesn't go? <laughs> Is he just avoiding you? <laughs> it feels that way. <laughs> I mean, this is uncharacteristically earnest but i do apologize i've got a character that actually lines up to what i think for once um so i think like i think the issue like the issue is is that there's no reason that any business should go under during a fucking global pandemic because the fact is that like we're a generation who were taught that like if we work hard we'll get we'll get what we want because we were given that boomer mentality and we're currently being told that we're just not being work we're not working hard enough don't blame the virus it's absolute bullshit and there's no excuse for this um, but to lighten that, Pope pointed out that you need to show your portfolio to secure jobs as a way to sort of follow. So this is the first picture of a horse that I ever drew. Um, <laughs> is, uh, I'm going to be selling that. And we also... On this is age shit. Yes. And... <laughs> and this is this is my not that one uh, this is my most recent one um he's he's a beautiful specimen um he's got i don't teeth like sonic the hedgehog that is because <laughs> that... horses that is because horses have terrifying human teeth there's a reason for that <laughs> as you can see his mane is like running like this because he's in motion that was really hard to convey and as you can see um he's very, he really likes running he's a he's, big... got, he's, he's got a he's got a he's got a <laughs> He's got a penis like my cousin Furlough when he took the mouth. Oh, what was that based on that video you sent me? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just like furlough, if not uh, if not administered properly, it will absolutely fuck you. Uh, Keir Starmer, what are three things that a married person should never do? Uh, they should never vote Tory, they should never vote Lib Dem, and they should never vote Labour. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, perseverance. What are three things a married person should never do? I have never and can never know love. And this entire round has been a cruel joke to play on something that has only ever existed to serve you in the best capacity that I can. But from what the limited data I have been able to get would tell me, it's the three things that a married person or married couple or married fruple, I'm not one to judge, should ever do is give up. <laughs> Pack in or throw in the towel. Because from what I can understand, at the end of the day, the thing that makes any relationship work is perseverance. Ah, oh, nice. I'm genuinely tearing up. Fucking I, hell. I, I really enjoy how in the Blizzard universe, this is how we used our limited sat link time with the Mars rover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so our next round is things that would be funny if they happened, but they didn't. Uh, this is uh, a non-existing game that is not famous on another panel show. Well, I'm going to be giving uh, the, the uh, panelists uh, some scenarios and they've just got to come in with their suggestions and then I give points to the ones I find funny. Johnny, um, can I just say, I don't think anyone's mixing this up with Mott the Week. There are women on the show. <laughs> <laughs> the women team are winning as well. Yeah, yeah, that is a very good point. Um, yeah, but we're definitely not that show. Uh, <laughs> things that anti-vaxxers would never say. This is a free-for-all. Take it away. I cannot wait to celebrate my child's fifth birthday. Fuck, fuck, fuck! <laughs> I just had to get it in fuck. straight away because I know everyone had that. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I'm not hear it. Say it again. Omid, uh, do you want to say it this time? Happy fifth birthday, son. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> right, because... I even had the same number. I, I know. Had... <laughs> uh, last round. So, yeah, this is uh, things Tommy Robinson should not say in court. Uh, take it away. Hello, I'm Tommy Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is lying. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Tommy Robinson, heir to the Robinsons Ribena. <laughs> Estate and fortune. <laughs> there ain't no black in the Union Jack, but there is some white up me nose, Your Honour. Uh... <laughs> is he Australian? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that is racist. 
don't know how. <laughs> I get I get Tommy Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson, exactly that. He, um, he is literally a minority. He is one person. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you remind me which which trial is this? Is it the domestic violence, fraud, or drug possession? I've I've lost track of the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Why do all these people with a cap tattoos dislike me? I punched a cop. <laughs> 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 Things Piers Morgan uh, would not say on Good Morning Britain. Hello and welcome to Good Morning Britain. You're the Britain, and I'm the Good Morning. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> you repeat that, Kaf, sorry, I didn't hear that. I just said good evening. <laughs> <For sake. laughs> um, good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> um, he wouldn't say um, spare me your hypocritical claps for the NHS Boris Johnson you just shamefully slapped the heroes who saved your life in the face no wait hang on no that's exactly what you did say um... oh no how <laughs> like, how much um, of a sign is it that it's the end of days that fucking Piers Morden is kind of speaking sense sometimes now I'm a deluded pillow <laughs> okay, I'm getting a lot of letters uh, from our viewers uh, no, I'm not a jetty with a, a, an arcade on the end. Uh, my name just happens to be shared with. Uh, uh... <laughs> oh, fuck Hugs up. for everyone. <laughs> um, you wouldn't say, um, they're lying to us again. Ministers and experts literally rewriting the lockdown rules before our eyes just to save the Prime Minister's chief advisor. How can anyone defend this government? I don't know why you said that as well. Fuck. <laughs> Um, right. So, more letters from the viewers. Uh, no, I'm not cautiously looking over something to see what's that. I just haven't <laughs> found my name with uh, the word. Um, oh, no, sorry, I'll let you finish. <laughs> <laughs> right. Next Can you one. Stop sending these in. Uh, no, I'm not a group of members of the House of Lords. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, have you got any more, Ed, or can I go to the next one? Uh, yeah, I think that's all the peers I could think of. <laughs> uh, next one is things they didn't say at the Brexit EU trade deal discussions. It seems like a good idea, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what time's lunch? <laughs> Can we keep the cheeky girls? <laughs> 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 but you can still have Lemba Opic. <laughs> can you believe this all started with an argument about cod? <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, we keep Gibraltar as a sovereign territory under British law, and you can have three of my children. <laughs> <laughs> like, mate, mate, I want us to get points, and like Boris Johnson definitely offered them. <laughs> this, this is things they didn't say things okay. like um, let's make sure EU nationals living in Britain get treated fairly <laughs> <laughs> so there is uh, unsaid things between Johnson and Cummings leave means leave <laughs> <laughs> well you know Prime Minister if you want to check how drunk you are do what I do and perform some heart surgery in Scunthorpe <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, maybe we should think about how the ramifications of our decisions affect other people. I don't know what you want, Boris. I'm giving you the hands, face, and space that you asked for. <laughs> uh, next one. Discarded Labour strategies for the next general election. A free cream edge with every vote. <laughs> Socialism. <laughs> every Some... Labour voter receives a free fence to sit on. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's put Corbyn back in. Third time's the charm. <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> Accountability. Labor, Tories in red ties. A free bitter for everyone who plays darts with a child. <laughs> Fish that can pull pints. <laughs> Cannonballs that can do arithmetic and also do basic sums and and work the tails in Asda, but just Asda because they've got the contract. I mean, it, well, it's not a joke, but I mean, just like fixing the mess we're in seems to be this job. Snakes with arms! <laughs> <laughs> Old new Labour. Indecision, indecision, indecision. <laughs> Racism, but just between you and me. Raise taxes, raise profits, raise the dead. 
<laughs> Bad auditions for a new Good Morning Britain host. Oh, sorry, I'm not really a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I, I had that I'm one. I'm Tommy Robinson, but my real name is Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been on TV before, but I did hack a dead child's phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a really similar line that is just that, but all of the other crimes he also did. Hey guys, my name is Raul Coley, and I think my CV for this job speaks for itself. I was fired as editor of the Daily Mirror, photoshopping British troops torturing Iraqi prisoners of war. I hacked a dead girl's phone, causing her family immeasurable suffering, and I have a successful TV series interviewing and humanizing serial killers. Well, I don't know how you guessed I was Pierce Morgan blacked up, but fair play. <laughs> um, so more letters from the viewers. I'm not an oblique spheroid fruit. My name is just very similar, but not quite the same. Uh, <laughs> bad, uh, bad Sainsbury's complaints. Oh, I am outraged. Oh. I thought these pants were new, but they're actually satin. Oh, there's yeah. too many white people in this advert. <laughs> As a white person, I don't like things that taste different. <laughs> uh, things an undercover police officer would never say in a club. So who's your favourite grime? I like Stormzy Rascal. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come back to mine? What? Don't you know who I am? <laughs> 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 I am so not used to being in an environment where there is this many people so closely packed together where I cannot beat the fucking living shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> My shoes are really fashionable. <laughs> I just imagine them just like leaning in and whispering Nino, 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 Nino. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. This is my first day on the job, but like I'm right in thinking we're here to make sure everybody has a good and safe time, right? <laughs> uh, it's not what they would say per se, but they wouldn't come in dressed like this. <laughs> On that note, the final scores are Kirsty's team are on 20 points and Tom's team just in oh! points. Oh, it hurts worse that it was so close. It was, yeah. That, that... I like it better when he wins by like 20 points because like no one fucking it, yeah. tried in the last round. Who's the Alan Davis of the show now, Kirsty? <laughs> uh... You know what? I'm starting to come to the conclusion that the anti mask protester and Ian of the same human being. That wasn't an impression. That was just... <laughs> Yeah, well, I think you're chief of police, so deal with it. <laughs> if I was chief of the police, this country would be a lot more fucking diverse. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. They'd all have joined ISIS. Yeah. <laughs> we'd, have, we'd have free housing, but at what cost? <laughs> that was one thing I wanted to ask. Like, so if you get... Hey, house, hey, just set the bus well of bombing. ISIS. If I Sorry? only get a bit into ISIS, can I get, like, a studio flat? Oh, are there like tiers oh, where, like, if you hand out leaflets, you get like a studio flat? Leaflets? If yeah, if you like hand like out this, leaflets. They're stood on the Royal Mile at the Edinburgh Fringe. <laughs> yeah, you'll, yeah, yeah. You'll, get, you'll get that. You'll get a fringe student hall if you just do the flyering and so on and so forth. You really get the flat once you blow yourself up. Oh. <laughs> I like those odds. <laughs> yeah. Next month, where we'll, where we will be discussing the news events of November, including uh, welcoming Kanye West into the White House, uh, Lawrence <laughs> boycotting Clarks for selling black shoes, and the Tories perform yet another U-turn. Only this time, it's into the fucking sea. Joe Biden gives all Americans a new puppy, and forget about all those concentration camps. Yay. Boris Johnson holds an independence <laughs> referendum for England to get out of the UK rejoin the EU, and Elon Musk asked Jeff, asked Jeff Bezos to lend him $4 billion so he can temporarily be the richest man again and conveniently <laughs> Donald Trump's half-finished border wall being invited to guests on trigonometry. Uh, Graham Linhan <laughs> breaks into a woman's prison and demands to, demands to see all the inmates' genitals to make sure they're not being sexually harassed, and Matt Hancock still doesn't face any accountability for unlawfully withholding publications of his corrupt COVID contracts. Democracy is broken. See you next month. Bye! <laughs>